Yeah. Very important content warning. I have this here in big, large caps. This is going to be graphic tonight. A uh, parental, well, it says my notes say parental guidance suggested. I would say parental advisory. Uh, this is probably not going to be appropriate for kids because we're going to be talking yeah. about really strong topics. Now, if you're you have a teenager, I would say 12 and up, they should probably be yeah, in here because they might be struggling with some of this stuff. Kids, maybe even at their school, going through it too. Yeah. yeah. So we are. We don't want to hold back. And I told yeah. Marcella, don't. You know, I wanted to make sure it's as potent as it really needs to be because yeah. people are struggling going through these Absolutely. things. But we will be talking about adult content and graphic content. So it will be graphic. But like I said, I want to make sure that we're really going into the fullness of everything going on here. You can leave it. It's, it's frozen all good. Okay, so let's jump into this. This is Marcella. Marcella, how are you Hi doing guys. tonight? I am terrified, but it's getting better. It's getting <laughs> is better. Is it getting better? It's getting better. Uh, I'll, I'll, you're, you're such a natural at this that get, it's, it's calming me down. Get comfortable. It, it is. The first beginning is nerve wracking, trying to yeah. figure out, okay, where am I going to look? What am I going to say? And, mm -hmm. But you know what? It's going to be amazing. Yeah. I heard your testimony a bunch of times, but specifically yeah. when Delafay came to our church yeah. and I sat back there and I cried and Roy <laughs> cried and we were talking. And we we're like, man, this is one of the most powerful testimonies literally yeah. I've ever heard. And here's why it's so important. Yeah. There's so many people watching that are struggling in silence, that are going through what you went through, and mm -hmm. there's nowhere for them to go. There's no one talking about what we're gonna talk about tonight. Yeah. And so we're yeah. here to tell you guys, like there is wow. freedom available. There is breakthrough available. This testimony is gonna give you a glimpse into what God can do in your life. Absolutely. So if you're out there struggling, like this is a story for you. If you have family struggling, then mm -hmm. this, is, this is raw, this is uncut, but this is the power of yeah. God. And so let's start with, Growing up, right? Because yeah. we're going to talk about a lot of topics of how you got to where you are now. Mm -hmm. By the way, now she's a worship leader. She's a woman preacher. She yeah. runs a podcast. She runs a deliverance yeah. map. She's a list of things she does, but you weren't always that way. No. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. But let's start with just growing up. How did you grow okay. up? How did you get to where we'll talk about yeah. later? Yeah. So first, hi, everybody. Hi. You're just saying hi in the comments. I just want to say hi. Um, get those nerves out. And then thank you for having me on, obviously. Um, so just growing up. I came from a really well-to-do family, a really good family, actually. Uh, my dad was a military man. My mom was in medical. So growing up was great. Um, it wasn't until um, like middle school, high school, that these odd behaviors started to come out. Mm. But it wasn't, and I know I'm going to kind of go you know, forward then back, but yeah. it wasn't until salvation and going through deliverance did I realize that something that happened in my childhood mm. had actually kind of followed me all the way through life. And I'd never dealt with it um, as an unsaved person. And then just recently as a, a saved person. So, um, and, and this is going to be kind of hard to maybe hear. I know that my family might be watching it. My family yeah. loves you. Yeah. Um, and I didn't actually talk to anyone about it um, up until I needed to get delivered. Um, so when I was little, I was getting babysat by, um, a family friend. This is still so raw for me. Yeah. So yeah. I, no, no, you're fine. Um, you need to, it's fine. Uh, I didn't realize what it was until later on in life. And I was molested when I was little Yeah. and never talked about it. Never told a soul. Um, it was my dad's friend. And so growing up, I had this animosity toward my dad, mm. but I, ha I have great parents, Isaiah, but I had this hate towards them my whole life. Uh -oh. And I didn't really realize why I didn't want to be close to them until I started dealing with this through deliverance. Mm. Um, as a saved person, it, it started to make sense to me that I was holding something against them that happened to me that they knew nothing about. Um, but then you look at my life as we go, we're gonna go through it, it makes sense. Like the, the behaviors that started to come out um, it makes sense, you know, a kid that goes through something like that at that age, there aren't really words to describe what mm. happened to you, especially if it's a family friend yeah. or if you were never talked to about people touching you or doing things to you, you, you don't have a language for that. So you just, you don't say anything. And that's kind of what happened to me. I just didn't say anything. And I never, I never thought twice about it. When I was little, I actually had dreams of murdering the person Wow, as um, a little kid? As a little kid. Wow. I, I want to say I was around five or six years old. I can't remember. Um, and I would remember having, and I know we're jumping right into it, That's right fine. off the deep end, but um, I I remember having dreams, and I it's going to be kind of graphic. I don't know. Yeah, it's really fine. graphic. But Whatever. I would have dreams of, like, you know, murdering him. Yeah. And then dreams of putting him in a place where his wife could find him. Wow. Because as I was like... As a little kid, you're having these yeah. dreams. Yeah. Wow. I think I just wanted people to hurt the way that I hurt. And so, yeah, it just kind of manifested into those dreams. Um, 
So growing up, I followed in my sister and brother's shadow. My sister was 13 years older than me. Okay. So she was like a second mom. Um, and my brother and sister, they're very leader personalities. Yeah. They're very extroverted. They're successful at everything they do. They are incredible people, just like my parents. And I would be found, like there are pictures still of me as a child and I'm like hiding behind a couch. It's just odd. Yeah, like you come yeah. from such a great family and you just have such a weird temperament. Yeah. And um, I don't. I look back at the pictures and I'm like, why was I so sad? Mm. So kind of fast forwarding, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, going into middle school, we moved from Guam to California. Okay. So I was born on Hawaii, raised on Guam, came back to California. Okay. And in middle school, that's when these really weird behaviors started coming out. Um, Cause I was, you know, from a good, well-to-do family. My mom raised us in the Catholic church, okay. actually. So you're raised Catholic. Raised Catholic. She taught us to pray. We would pray every single day. I remember every day she'd be like, don't make Jesus wait. And we mm. would go to the altar and, and pray the prayers that she knew how to pray. Yeah. Um, this was an altar in your home? Altar okay, in our so home. We had an altar we had in our home. home, statues okay, <laughs> and everything. Um, but she really tried to instill in us faith. Yeah. faith. And so, and I, I loved praying, which is really interesting. So kind of fast forward into middle school, I started having like a lot of self-hatred kind of coming out. And this wasn't when self-hatred was a social thing. Yeah, now it, it's... It, right. Yeah. It's kind of culture, you know, yeah. it's okay to hate yourself. It's not, by yeah. the way. But at that age, I just started developing a lot of self-hate to myself. And um, that's kind of just where um, a lot of inward behavior started happening. So outwardly, really social, really fun. And then inwardly, like cussing myself out in my head. Wow. And I was probably like 10 to 12 years old when that kind of started. And you're hearing cuss words. I'm just hearing like, I mean, cuss words and like how much I hated myself. It was, it was odd because I didn't have any reason to. No one was talking to me like that. Yeah. My parents didn't talk to me like that. I mean, my dad would occasionally, you know, say some things. He was a, kind of a, a, t a stiff man, but um, that. But then as I got older, I, I started cheerleading. Okay. That was kind of a big thing. Uh, your wife actually was kind of in the atmosphere of cheerleading that I was yeah. in. Um, so I started cheerleading kind of middle school time and that's kind of when the eating disorder started okay. because I wanted, I mean, okay, like terms, I, I wanted to be like a flyer, yeah. like the person that goes up in the air. And I remember a couple of people in my family just making jokes about like my body weight, but alre already I already had this like implanted thought that I hated myself. Mm. So even if you're just making a funny joke about my body weight, immediately I turned it into this devastating thing that I was a terrible person because I was fat. Wow. Or, you know, like I should die because I was fat. Like that's what my mind turned those thoughts into. And it could have been innocent. You know yeah. how families kind of joke about each other's weight. Like that was not funny to me. Yeah. Um, so that kind of developed there. And I learned about bulimia. Okay. And like I was like sixth to eighth grade. And um, I was taught that, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about it. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, again, discretion that if, you know, you wanted to stay thin, you could eat and then throw up. Wow. And so I started doing that and I just, I, but before the word depressed was like out there, yeah. I was having these episodes of depression. Okay. So I was, so for example, I was going to cheerleading competitions. My family was extremely social out there. And in the middle of the competition, Isaiah, I would just like run to my mom and run into her lap and just start crying mm. out of nowhere. And she would be like, what is wrong with you? What is, cause you know, you can imagine yeah. you're this great family. Yeah. What is wrong with my kid? Yeah. And I would just sit in her lap and I'm like, I don't know. And it would happen all the time in the most sporadic places that should be normal to be happy and normal. And the only way that I could explain it, Isaiah was, I would feel like someone died. Mm. Like I would just wake up and I would feel like someone died. And then other behaviors that ha started happening is I would get disciplined like any kid would. Yeah. And when I would get disciplined, I would immediately start hurting myself. Wow. So I used to like clench my hand, like, you know, my fingertip nips, fingertips into my forearm. And I would actually, it, it started out that way. And then it started becoming, I would get angry when I wouldn't see blood. Wow. So 
super demonic. Super, yeah. But I didn't know there yeah, none of that was talked. No one talked about. Did you that. ever have a thought that there's something dark in me or something causing me or talking no? I thought me? it was me. You just thought it was you. I thought it was me, and because I didn't understand what I was doing to myself, I hated myself even more for doing that to yourself. Right. So it's a spiral, like a chain reaction of right. Just and so you think that you're a terrible person. Wow. Because you're hearing all these things like that you're some saying to yourself. Right now are going through this exact thing. Yeah, and and you hate yourself because you realize how terrible of a person you are because you're doing these things to yourself. So I'm having these body image issues, and you might say something funny like, "Oh, you should be the cheerleader that runs the extra mile." Wow. And I immediately want to commit suicide. I immediately just start saying that all it would be better if I'm dead. It would. It just starts swarming in your head, and then you hurt yourself. You you know I'm clenching my fingers into my arm. That's how it started. And then you're, you're, you're kind of embarrassed and you're angry at yourself. So mm. it's just this weird relationship toward yourself. So that's how that started. And you also were having like memory loss as well in high school, middle school, you were going yeah. through depression. So I, I noticed that now because as I got older, I realized that I don't have memories from childhood. Wow. So let's say you were to tell me about your childhood, yeah. your teacher in fifth grade, fourth grade, I cannot, to this day, I cannot tell you who my fourth grade teacher was, my third oh. grade teacher, my fifth grade teacher, my kindergarten teacher. I can't tell you what my mom smelt like. I can't tell you what she looked like. I can't tell you conversations we had. I don't, I, God is so faithful. He's given me like drops of like memories, yeah. especially in my deliverance. I actually saw our, my childhood home. Wow. And then I saw my mom helping me at the table, helping me do homework. And what's really heartbreaking about that is my mom's a great mom. Yeah. But because of how demonized I was, I couldn't remember any of the good things about her. I don't have like happy, like memories, really not much of any at all. And that memory loss, I look back and I'm like, I, I know what it is now, right? I know it's memory loss. But when you're going through it, Isaiah, you're literally just trying to survive life. Mm. You're not sitting there like, I can't remember anything. You're just trying to survive. You don't know any different. Yeah. So as I'm getting older, there's the depression. I get into high school and the eating gets a little bit more manipulated. So if I get in trouble, I'm not eating. If mm. I'm mad at myself, I'm not eating. And I made this rule, like there were specific foods that I wasn't going to eat. And so a hamburger was one of them. Wow. And we would go out with family and I ate the hamburger. And I remember Isaiah, the first thing, I went upstairs to my room and I like stuck my knuckle out, full fist, smashed myself in the face. Wow. I was just smashing myself in the face. And I mean, yeah, it hurt, but like I was so angry at myself. Yeah. And it felt like the right thing to do was to punish myself for not doing what I said I was going to do. So that behavior would just be consistent in everything, clenching my wrist, like my, my, my fingertips into my skin. And then um, just getting obsessed with hurting myself. Mm. So then when high school came around. Which is so crazy because yeah. you have, like you said, and I love how you're honoring your parents. You had this beautiful upbringing, amazing parents. They're you know taking to the Catholic Church, doing their best to what they were raised in yeah. their religion. And your family's successful. They're running the cheerleading thing, all that. Yeah. But then there's this dark, this darkness, this mm -hmm. dark side that no one really fully knows about. Mm -mm. And what's crazy is there's so many people out there that are living that exact yeah. lifestyle, not thinking, and this is the whole message of tonight, not thinking there's a way out. And yeah. This is something you yeah. sh you share when you talk about your testimonies. Like, I didn't know this wasn't normal. Like it sounds, and we're going to talk more about some of the yeah. stuff and it sounds graphic and it sounds violent. And you're like, how could this be? Mm -hmm. But it's like, you thought that was normal. You literally thought this is yeah. the way my life will always be. Yeah. And this is the beauty right. of the power of God is your life won't be the way it always was. Like mm -hmm. you have this opportunity in the gospel yeah. to start again. Mm -hmm. To start a new mm -hmm. life, to be like, we preach the gospel. Literally. We literally say like, oh, Jesus loves you and kind of just like keep going on and add him to your life. But mm -hmm. Jesus is like, no, you actually get to die. Come That's on. like beautiful. If you're living Come the way on. you were living, Come on. the best thing anyone could have ever told you was, Marcel, you could yeah. literally die to yourself yes. and become yes. a new person. And yes. then there's a whole beauty of and yes. get deliverance and get freedom. Yes. But I think the thing, yeah. the message you're saying and, and people can relate to is like, man, I didn't know it wasn't normal mm -hmm. to be depressed. It yeah. wasn't normal to throw up after I eat. No. That, that becomes your norm. Mm -hmm. Like for some of you watching this, darkness mm -hmm. is literally your normal. normal. Having yeah. thoughts of my husband's always going to cheat on me. I'm always yeah. going to be this way. I'm always going to cut myself. I'm always going to be depressed mm -hmm. and anxious and suicidal. I'm disgusting. They, people listening, normal. they literally think it's normal to hear voices saying, no. 
I'm gonna, and we know nope. the video is gonna get flagged. We don't care. We want to make sure we get the truth out there. But there's people have have a voice telling them, just take your life. And they're they might be yeah. young people. Yeah. I have eight year olds, ten year olds that say I have this voice telling me to take my life. And mm -hmm. so we're here to expose yeah. that voice. Yep to expose the works of darkness and let you guys know that you can be free, you can yeah. be delivered. And if God can take Marcella from where yeah. she was, yeah. to of course tonight we're gonna talk about where she is now yeah. after we go through her testimony. Yeah. And I really just feel God can do it for any of you. And so like, if you're listening going like, oh, this is an, uh, a story about deliverance, this is not, this is a story of the gospel Come changing on. somebody's life and giving somebody a fresh life. Yeah. Like that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Whether I, you were raised the way I was with, again, I had a beautiful family, beautiful yeah. home. Or the ways you where you were, and mm -hmm. your parents are like, we didn't even know that happened to you. Mm -mm. And that trauma, yeah. you know, now was that open door for the enemy to come in and just start wreaking havoc. So here right. you are, you're in middle school, now you're in high school, mm -hmm. your memory loss, mm -hmm. depression, mm -hmm. your self-harming. Are you cutting yourself? I know you said you're at this you're, point I start cutting myself. Okay. And it was weird, Isaiah, because this is when I started hearing the voices. Okay. Because I would be in class. And I would hear, I would see, I saw like a soda can, like just like this. I okay. promise I won't spill it in Jesus' name. You're good. It's clear. Yeah. It's clear. It's okay. And uh, I would take off the cap like this, and I would, in my head, I would hear I could totally use this to like slice my arm up right now. Wow. As if it was like this great. I just learned Ugh. how to make a rocket. Like that was how great of an idea it sounded. So I would go into the high school bathroom, and I would cut myself. And again, it would always be anger if I didn't bleed. It was a really weird. Fa so if you're thing not bleeding, blood. you're literally getting physically angry. Yes. So and demonic. you got to keep going. So if you feel it, you got to keep going. Um, so at this point, my mom puts me in counseling. She puts me in therapy. She, I have a site. This is and, and she, if she's watching this, bless her because she tried so hard, yeah, Isaiah. Yeah. She, I had a psychiatrist. I had a psychologist. I had a counselor. I had a therapist wow. and I had an incredible family Wow. and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. So I was on antidepressants, anti-anxieties and anti-schizophrenics. Um, and this is in high school. You're on all these medications. Yeah. And I would literally be at cheer practice. We owned a cheerleading business at this time, a, a super successful uh, people that are probably watching. Um, were a I'm part sure of our you gym. Have some friends. That yeah, are, yeah. Yeah. That are and, and, and I was a huge part of their life. Cause as I'll tell in a little bit, cheerleading was a huge part of, of my life. Um, but I would fall asleep during cheer practice, like on the floor, I would just fall, fall out because of medication. Oh. So I cried to my mom and I'm like, I, I don't want to do this because I know that I don't want to feel depressed, but I want to feel something. Mm. And when I was on those medications, I felt nothing. Like I would just feel numb. And at first I called them my happy pills and I thought it was funny. And I was like, oh, I got to take my happy pills. But it almost became easier to just not exist wow. because I just became very numb as I took these medications. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not doing this. So now, let me ask you a quick question. Yeah. They, Cause I don't know a lot about the whole, what they diagnose you and pills. How are they diagnosing you and to give you all, you're a teenager with all these pills, all these medications. How does that even happen? What are they? They go off what you say. Okay. So there's no test. You, they're not really doing no. a test of like, oh, you're missing this in your brain or your chemical. No, there's no. Because some people are going to listen to this and say, well, it's not demonic brother. It's just mm -hmm. a chemical imbalance. And I know yeah. we'll get into a huge heated people get heated when you start saying about right. whether it's chemicals whether it's demonic right. but for right. you clearly it was a demonic thing clearly but it was demonic what yeah. were they i mean what's the diet what are they um they really just went off what i was saying okay so my my testimony of the things i was hearing um and they called it manic okay. depression and then a bipolar so i would be really really up and then i'd be really really down Okay. Um, you know, super outgoing. Like I told you as a little kid, outwardly super social and then going home and punching myself square in the face and cutting wow. myself. And they call that bipolar. Wow. So, and then but there's no test. So you have there's no you level also have test. medicine for schizophrenia, yes. which I was doing some research on schizophrenia yeah. recently. And they were saying like the main category, um, way they categorize it is if you're seeing images of mm -hmm. people or like dark figures, usually yeah. it's never usually something good or you're hearing voices. Yeah. So they say if you're hearing voices or seeing images of like deceased relatives, you're schizophrenic, here's medication. So, and so I, again, sad. I know I have so friends sad. watching and family that are like, this is all medical. There's no such thing as it's, it's not demonic. It's just a mental illness. But in my yeah. mind, I'm like, if you go to a doctor saying I'm hearing voices and seeing things, they don't, they're not going to tell you, oh, you have a demon. You need to get deliverance right. or you need, you need Jesus like right. a doctor. So then they're just giving you these pills in high school right. and you're basically, and I hate to use the word, but you're, you just become a zombie. Yeah. You just become well, a shell I of a person. Well, I did become a zombie. Like the medications that I was on, that's what it did to me. And that's the only reason why my mom was like, okay with me not taking them 
because I got worse. Okay. Like it was like, okay, she's not getting better. Like it's it's like, what's the trade off? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and so for people that it makes better, maybe, but it yeah. wasn't it wasn't doing that for me. For your case, you're saying this wasn't was doing that for me. It, it was spiritual, absolutely. Thing. And I mean, it was yeah, it was definitely spiritual. So, but I was in church, and I yeah. I was you know going to church right yeah. so i think that some people that might the say Catholic church correct right okay so when people might say well i tried the church thing it doesn't work for me and it's like did you yeah did you go to the right did you, church like did you did you like you know have an encounter with jesus yeah. and be yeah. filled with his holy spirit yeah. or are you going to a building and saying and i'm not i'm not trying to dog yeah. on anyone yeah. but i was doing that i mean there was even a point where I told my mom, I'm going to get off these medications and I'm going to go to church. Mm. And I, I told you that before we started, uh, told Alyssa that before we started the live stream, I thought that was profound because mm. I just, some, maybe the Holy Spirit was telling me, I don't know, but that was my only hope. Mm. That was my only hope. And I was like, I'm going to go to church and I'm going to get off these medications. So, <laughs> hey, you know, I did, yeah. but it wasn't just a building. It wasn't just a religion that that did nothing for me. I was mm. in that for years. And it wasn't like my mom was a part time Catholic. She was a full time all the time, all the things. Yeah. And, but but nothing worked for me. I actually even cried out to Mary. Mary. Or, yeah, yeah to Mary. so uh, is it OK if I yeah, go yeah, forward yeah. with yeah, that? Go so. Ahead. So, yeah, you can say whatever okay. you want. There's no okay. limits. You're not going <laughs> to um, tell it how it is. Yeah. So. Uh, my mom did a great thing after high school. She got me into college. Isaiah, I don't even know how I got into college because my GPA in high school was so bad. I had to like take a summer school course, all the things. It was it was pretty bad. My brother's a UCLA college college graduate. My sister is just amazing. And so maybe they just thought, well, if we just ship her off, yeah, maybe she'll yeah. get better, you know? Yeah. Um, and so she helped me get into college and I went to LA State. Well, it's in East LA. Yeah. It's, it's in a rougher part of the town. And uh, Isaiah, I went to college thinking that things were going to get better. Bulimia was on and off at this time. Um, cutting kind of eased down a little bit. I was trying not to take the psych meds. So I get sent off to college. Isaiah, I cannot wake up for the life of me at 9 a.m. Like I couldn't put a schedule together. Mm. I couldn't do common sense things. And mind you, I'm in a dorm with eight other people. Wow. And it's like you would think that I would know how to do life. But when you're demonized, wow. you cannot think. You cannot. There's no common sense. You just, and we might look at people sometimes and be like, get it together. I couldn't. Wow. I couldn't, like, I could basically, like, eat food, drink alcohol, and sleep around. Yeah. Like, that was basically, like, what I had the coherency to do. I couldn't go to classes, couldn't pay attention, couldn't wake up on time. So I actually got in a fight. <laughs> wow. And <laughs> I got jumped by the six foot woman from England. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I had a temper. I was angry. I, all the things. So anyways, you know, she like threatens to kill me. So, um, I leave the school and I go back home to Manteca. Well, sorry. Yeah. yeah I just, just said where I'm from. Yeah. Most people know it. Yeah. I go back to Manteca and, um, I'm doing better cause I come home. Okay. I come home. I'm better at home. I start doing cheerleading again. Okay. And I start so getting now back from college, back from college, getting to cheerleading and I get really good at it. I finally found my knack. I'm like, okay, like I can do this. I'm actually thriving at something. Mm. Wasn't really hearing voices at the time. Wasn't cutting. Um, bulimia wasn't really a thing. I was just having fun. I was just living life. I was doing great. And then I got really good at cheerleading. So I started bodybuilding kind of more towards my like young adulthood. Okay. And I start bodybuilding and I'm, I'm, I'm excelling at it. Isaiah, I mean, I think you kind of were around the same world that yeah. I was in. We're in the same town. I think town. the first time I ever saw you was at the gym and your shirt said F you. And in my <laughs> mind, I was like, I was like, wow, her shirt says F you. And Nico's I know like, we oh, that's my friend. Together. I think Nico knew you. My brother knew you. and was yeah. like, oh yeah, that's a, my friend Marcel. I was like, yeah. wow, that's a very interesting shirt. Yeah. I was very interested to see that he was leading guitar in a church because I yeah. used to party with him in the world. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, wow, he's actually in church now. What kind of church is this? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it was, that was, that was a testimony in itself to see uh, Nico change. Cause it's I did changed. see him at the gym. Yeah. Um, didn't say a word to me, but now I know why. Yeah. I wouldn't have said a word to me either, but, um, yeah, so I come home, I start bodybuilding and I'm growing in that community and I actually am doing so well in bikini bodybuilding. And Isaiah, the craziest thing is that what happened at this point in my life was like none of that stuff went, aw went away. Mm. It was like it just resurfaced, mm. right? So I won at top five at this competition. It's like a big Bay Area competition. I had like thousands of followers on Instagram that watched mm. my journey. They were all like, wow, oh my gosh. And they build you up, Yeah. right? They like put you on this tower. And when they do that to you, you kind of got to keep maintaining it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you got to keep being this person that everyone, because mm. you started out the journey and they're all looking up to you and you're like this model. And 
even my cheer kids, I mean, they looked up to me like I was like a huge yeah. idol in their life. And so there's that and building that. And I, I win the competition out of nowhere. People were like, where's this girl from? Wow. So what happens though, Isaiah, is I get like third out of five. And all of a sudden, those you're effing disgusting. Mm. It floods right back in my head because I didn't get first. Wow. It's like any bit of failure would flood me into like self-hatred mode. And so I remember after that competition, my cousins were there. It was great. We all go out to celebrate. And I remember we go to BJ's and we have a meal. And uh, I remember eating the meal. It was my first time eating like French fries because when you're co competing and dieting and stuff, you know, those things you don't have. At, at least I didn't. And I remember getting so anxious and I ran to the public bathroom and I start force vomiting again. And mm. that happened in high school, right? So like, it wasn't like I learned how to do this. It was like, it was like things were just coming back, wow. right? You build this tower, you build this life, but like the demons don't go away. Mm. So I'm vomiting and I'm like, literally I'm looking in that bathroom. I say, it's a public bathroom. It's pretty gross. And I'm like, what are you doing? And I know I missed a little bit of the testimony. I want to go back on it, but a little, a little bit even before that. So let's kind of backtrack yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So going back to like coming back from college and high school and stuff with the thing about being demonized that I want to like kind of share with people is like, sometimes you don't even know what you're doing. Mm. So going back to like the cutting thing, the, one of the last times I think I cut myself, the major times my mom got mad at me. I remember grabbing the largest knives I could find. Largest, wow. they're not like tiny knives. I walk upstairs intentionally with a knife in my hand and I go and I cut myself and then I hear, I can hear it to this day. And I, I, I share this on Delafe and all you hear is like, shing, shing. Oh. And I'm hearing it and it's almost like I'm getting a high out of it and I'm not feeling it wow. at all. And I put my head down and I remember just kind of like, I don't know if I blacked out for a second or what happened. I had my head down for just a second, super small, you know, countertop. And then I look up and I see blood. It just seeped all over the sink. And I remember another one of those moments, like, what did I just do? What did I just do? Like, what am I doing? And I look at my arm and it's not like the little ones where like you cut, it was like- But you still have scars. If you, you guys might not be able to see on see camera. Them, she has scars all over her arm. But they're like- Still, yeah, they're still all it there. It was- well, Yeah, you can see them now. And when you lead worship, and you put your hands up and those scars are showing to me. I'm like, that is such a sign of victory yeah. of what the enemy's done. You have all these scars up and down your arms to this day. And yet here you are worshiping, declaring freedom and running a deliverance map, seeing people Come get on. delivered. I just wanted to add that. But so you're in that moment. Yeah. You just cut yourself. And open flesh. Yeah. Like literally looked like a Ugh. meat market. Look like, look like a meat market. And I just remember thinking like, I don't, I don't even know what I just did. And then same thing, I told this on the Jalafe testimony as well, like when I flipped my truck, like yeah. one of those things where it's like, I had to make up a story at the hospital because I don't even know what happened. Wow. But I remember like driving. And I think that when you're demonized, I want to share this because yeah. I think a lot of people have these things happening to them in their life and they think it's normal. Yeah. And it's like, this is not normal. So, and I was a believer, like I believed in Jesus, yeah. right? I didn't have a relationship with him at all. I was definitely praying in a weird way, but in, way, your mind, but in you're my like, mind, I was raised Christian. I was raised Catholic. I absolutely was, in my mind. So there's nothing more. It's like, I've already done that. I've already been to the And Catholic that's why it's church. like the Jesus thing doesn't work. Like if you would yeah. ask me at that time, like, no, like, I'm trying and it's not working. So I would fall asleep at the wheel like all the time. And I remember, I don't even remember falling asleep. Wow. All I remember one time I was driving to cheer practice. I drove an F-150 truck. My parents gave me like the truck of my dreams, you know, and I remember waking up and the bottom of the car was now going like this, like the mats. I had like these Hawaiian shells, like it was just going like this. And so I was like, I'm flipping. Like that's all I knew at that moment. And all of a sudden I'm skidding and then I'm back on my wheels. I'm like, how do you, how do you flip? So I run out of the car and this guy's like running towards me who pulled off the side of the freeway. And um, he's like, are you, are you high? Are you drunk? Are you this? And I'm like, no. And he's so convinced that I am that I start thinking I am. I'm like, I, mm. am I drunk? Like, am I high? I don't even know what happened. And he was like, okay, I'm going to go get the person. Like he thought someone was in the car. And I was like, there's no one in the car. And he's like, no, no, no. Are you sure? And I'm like, I'm sure there's no, like I was going to church practice by myself. I'm sure there's no one in the car with me. So he goes, no one's in the car. But I share this because it's pretty amazing. A couple of weeks later in the cheer gym, I came to practice and one of our, my teammates 
said, I thought it was her, but I, when I heard she was, she was alone, I knew it wasn't her because there was someone else in the car that I saw. Wow. That's I know. crazy. I know. And I, at how the car got right back onto its wheels, I, I don't know. Right? So all these moments, when you talk about your testimony, Isaiah, and you're like, you talk about when you were hanging from dead. the chain, I should have been dead. I'm like, you look back and you're like, I should have been dead. It was God the entire time. God the entire time. How did I not bleed to death? Yeah. How did I not flip and just get smashed on top? Of how? Right? So, and so many times I overdosed on things and, you know, the grace yeah. of God. So all that kind of leads up to. So you were, at your, you were at the big knife. You were cutting yourself. Mm -hmm. And you were at the time where you're like, man, I actually enjoy doing this. You were mad if you didn't see blood when yep. you were cutting yourself, which all the stuff we're saying for people that are not demonized or aren't dealing with this, they're like, this is absolutely crazy. Like, you're, you're saying you were mad that you weren't bleeding, but this is how far the devil will take us whenever we go down these roads and whenever mm -hmm. we don't deal with these areas mm -hmm. of our life that we're, we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So here you are now. Um, tell us about the bulimia that you went through because it got way worse. So got way worse. It, it felt like things kind of went yeah. away. You get home, but now you're in this, mm -hmm. you're top, you're doing bikini, cheerleading, mm -hmm. modeling, yeah. and bodybuilding, right? Yes. And all yeah. that. I know I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying it all. I don't know what any of this is, but you're doing, you're doing uh, yeah. bodybuilding. Actually, you guys, what's really interesting is I actually would see Isaiah at the gym. Wow, um, that's a miracle. No one in the chat <laughs> believes that. <laughs> So the last time was 2000, yeah. what was that, 2012, 2013? Yeah, yeah no one yeah. believes that. I think you would wear cutoffs too wow, with, with that's, Chad. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> definitely old school. So here you are yeah. now, you're, a, so, you're, the bulimia got worse. The bulimia got worse and it was because, that, the not winning is what kind of set it off. Okay. And so it was like, I never had peace, I never had rest. Mm. And so it was like the fact that I didn't win because I was working so hard and I was at the top of the top, it was just like, no, there, there's more, I'm, I'm terrible. Like I pu would punish myself to get better, yeah, very odd. And uh, I remembered after that comp competition, I, competition, I, I, you know, threw up. And then, oddly enough, like I became very obsessed with bulimia. Wow! Like it became, and I say this, and a lot of people might actually know this because they're going through this. It became a romance. So crazy! It's sick. Yeah, it's it really is. And I would have like it would it would feel so good to vomit. And I couldn't, it would get to the point where I couldn't eat without vomiting. Wow. And so I even told Alyssa this. I said, if this were before and Jesus had not done what he did in my life and you were to pull out that food the way you did now, I wouldn't be able to listen to anything you guys are saying. All I would be thinking about is that that food is sitting there. Wow. And I would be okay, like pretending I'm normal, but I would be feeling so much anxiety at the fact that food was right there. Are you, what do you mean? Like you're afraid of the food or you have like a fear um, or you want it? I mean, what? I wanted to eat it because so I was you, starving. So but you're always starving. But I would you're never eating, eat in front of people. And then you're throwing it up. I would never eat in front of people because when you have an eating disorder, you get to a point where you lose your hunger signals and your full signals. Okay, because see, explain that because some people yeah. watching are going through that. And then some yeah. people are like, I've never even heard of an eating disorder. Yeah. So, so what is bulimia like? What would bulimia you be is as? when you basically just vomit your food, you okay. just throw up your food. But when you're doing it to be thin, you're eating, what usually happens is you eat a mass amount of food okay. because you haven't been eating for a very long time. And all of a sudden when you start eating, you binge eat. And mm. so you'll eat everything. And for example, this is real life. This is my, this was Isaiah. I cried on the way over here thinking about uh. that this was my life. And if, if Jesus didn't stop me, that I would probably still be doing this unless I would have died. It would have so been one of the, or the other. It's so inconceivable listening that the same person that was doing that is sitting right here and doing everything you're doing yeah. now. Like it's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It literally is unbelievable what God has done. So yeah. sorry, go ahead, keep explaining the Yeah, no, so this is what a day looked like. So I'd be starving for like two days, going to cheerleading practices, going to the gym. I'd see you, probably see Nico, right? And didn't like say anything. I'd be working out for hours. And then the next day I would go to Carl's Jr., Krispy Kreme, Wendy's, McDonald's. Are you going in secret? You don't want to I'm going to know in secret. Saying? You start developing a secret life. Mm. because you have to have a secret life to be bulimic. Like, you know, yeah. I mean, obviously some people might know you're doing it, but you always do it in secret. Yeah. And so and you're ashamed of it. You're and super you're ashamed totally of it. And you're out of me. control. Like you, you're so hungry. Cause I was anorexic bulimic. I was, mind you, I'm trying to maintain this model status because I'm like shredded online and everyone's like, and, and Nico could probably totally attest to this because we were in the same community. Yeah. And I was totally putting it like I was put together. Yeah. No one would have known that the next day I was driving to like four fast food restaurants. And I say, uh, I would eat until I could feel like my blood at the top of my neck. And like, I couldn't breathe because I was so full. 
Wow. And then I would go and I would I would vomit. And that was my life. It would be like two days starving, one day vomiting, two days starving. It was literally a schedule. It's like a work schedule. I had to maintain it because to be able to maintain that status of fitness that I was at, I had to maintain this disorder. Because when I went to go compete in bodybuilding, I was down to about 900 calories a day, um, plus like three hours of cardio, plus, true, you know, practice for truly all the things, you know, all the things. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there, there was that. And um, kind of trying Talk to about losing your gag reflex. Yeah, I actually, know that, that was, was all God. that was thing where it was kind of like a wake up call for you. Yeah. So now we're like wrapping up the end of like the not saved Marcella because and you're still cutting this whole time yeah you're hitting yourself the punching, punching yourself. stayed the punching okay, so stayed. you're literally hearing a voice tell you to punch yourself yeah. or you're just pun you're just in the room like no I would hear okay so for example if I walked into this room I would hear about how everybody hated me no way I couldn't sit here Isaiah the fact that I you could have a voice sit in telling a room, you that person thinks this about you that person if I were sitting that. here and you looked at like my 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 shirt yeah i would immediately think like he thinks i'm fat he's looking at my fat wow i could not have a normal without anxiety but i couldn't be in a room without anxiety just me. This is just, i did not just, think this wasn't normal i you just, i'm saying you it now it was normal oh it was normal it was just in your head that was my head every day voice. i was even at uh, we'll get there but yeah. i was even at the awakening and i was hearing things and it was totally normal for me it's not until people started testifying that i started finding out that this wasn't normal you just thought everybody has a voice telling them whatever yeah i I, everyone's anxious yeah. everyone right everyone's but depressed. to the degree everyone's just hiding it the way i am yeah and demons hide obviously right yeah. so they're not gonna be like this isn't yeah. normal that you're hearing me yeah you know my it's name's like, depression yeah no, yeah it. totally normal so um the, so you're hitting yourself you're hearing voices telling you this person thinks this, this thinks person. that yeah so i'm i'm um it was really weird because you're really popular but you also think that everybody hates you mm. very strange so I lo start losing my gag reflex and it starts taking me what used to be like 30 minutes to throw up. It's starting to take me two hours. What would used to take me an hour is now taking me three hours, four hours. And it's a really expensive habit to keep up. It's an addiction. It is seriously an addiction because you have to buy all the food and then I'm spending, you know, money and then you're throwing it up. So and you're it just would take in the bathroom, just trying to throw it up would for take. Hours. Well, when I started losing my gag reflex, it would take hours. Like my knuckles would be bloody. My eyes would be bloodshot. My jaw would what, be what sore. Is, why are your eyes bloodshot? Just from the trying, pressure. just from trying to throw you're, up. You're like the pressure. Clenching. Yeah. The pressure of like you're dry heaving because what was happening is I, is I was dry oh. heaving and no, no food was coming up. When we say God works in mysterious ways. I didn't even know you could lose your gag reflex. I don't even know if that's a thing. Yeah. I don't even, I don't know. I've never looked it up. Yeah. But I'm losing my gag reflex to the point where I'm putting anything down my throat. I mean, I had to throw away spoons in our house because it had teeth marks on it. Oh. Because I oh, we it, told you it guys just it was brought be back. Graphic. It we brought it's like not even graphic to me. So I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. just like talking about my life. Yeah. But I'm I'm I, I saw them recently and I'm like, I can't I you know, I threw them away. But yeah. But it, it it's normal to you. A back of razors, like the the handle part because I was so desperate Isaiah because I knew that if I couldn't keep up this thing then my whole model would would shatter my whole kingdom would shatter if I didn't keep this up so I'm losing my gag reflex and this crazy thing happens I, I, I like go into my room and I like see this light at the end of the tunnel and I start getting these desires to recover mm. but eating disorder to recovery is very serious yeah like your body isn't used to having hydration you're, you're dehydrated Crazy. all the time. Your electrolyte, that's why people can have like, they can die because of their electrolyte imbalances. Because yeah. when you're throwing up, you're losing all of your fluids. So to retain glucose in your body, to retain food in your body is actually very scary when you're used to not. Mm. So I'm like, you know, going through this anxiety of wanting to recover. I'm talking to some people about wanting to recover and everyone's like, no, it's okay. Just keep going. Like you They're can do this. They're encouraging you to keep doing it. Yeah, the fitness How community, is the fitness that? community is like, just keep going. Come on, go hard or go home. You know, like, let's go pick it back up. You could do this, get back on it. Because a lot of people, when they compete, Isaiah, after they compete, their bodies rebound mm. and they gain a ton of weight. And they, people don't talk about this part. And it's yeah, really dark it, and it's yeah. really depressing and for a lot of people. people you, in the chat saying, yeah. I'm going through this. I can't believe this. It and sounds it's, like my and life. And it's so sad because that's all they have, Isaiah, is like fitness is what gives them... A, a, a sense of meaning and a sense mm. of, and all of a sudden becomes this devil in your life. And you're like, what is this? So when you're rebounding, your metabolism is jacked up and people are looking at you funny and they're like, what happened to you? And you're like, I'm literally just trying to survive. 
So when I was eating that little and I tried to start eating again, I tried to start recovering, I started gaining weight. And mind you, I'm like center flyer of my team at this time. I'm, I'm cheerleading and bodybuilding at the okay. same time. So I'm really liked in my community. And, and they no, no one knew, it's not their fault, but they would build me up. Yeah. You know, and when I would kind of talk about like, I can't do this anymore. It's like, no, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going. Even when it was like, I don't want to work out like this. I can't do, no, 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 just get back on your meal plan. And so when I started gaining weight and I started kind of hearing the whispers of like, mm. she just lost it. She just felt like Isaiah, hearing those things, hearing the whispers in the background of a community that you thought was so behind you yeah. is so heartbreaking because they have no idea that your life is at stake. Mm. And, and all they care about is you continuing to be like the front page of something. That's not really how it is, but that's, got, that's how that's, it feels. Yeah, that's how it, yeah feels. it's how it feels. And people might not know the degree of what you're going through, right? But a lot of fitness competitors go through this and they go through so much body shame because their bodies are trying to be healthy again. Mm. They're trying to be, get on some natural body fat. Body fat is pretty healthy, just a general healthy body fat. You know, 0% body fat when you're competing is not healthy. Yeah. What happens to your brain and happens to your organs is extremely unhealthy. I'd be having conversations. I worked at GNC and my clients would be talking to me mid conversation. I would just like goldfish. I would just wow. lo like lose what I was saying. There's no glucose in my brain. You're wow. crazy. So, That's you know, crazy. as you're recovering, it, it shows I was getting cellulite in places that I'd never had cellulite. I wasn't fitting any of my clothes. God really put me in this place where I was so embarrassed to be me. Like mm. he wasn't doing it. Like shame on you. It was like, I had to get to this point. Yeah. Because if I didn't, I would have died. You were at the bottom. I would have died. I would have kept going. Like, I would have absolutely listened to everybody. Like, okay, come on, let's go. You know, pedal to the metal, let's push. I had that personality mm. to just keep going. So I lost my gag reflex. And there was a point where I was vomiting up to four hours a day. And I was so tired. Isaiah, I would lay down in my bed. I would take like a break and I would get back up and I would chug some stuff and I would try to go again. That was my, that was my so you're life. you're literally four hours a day trying to throw up. Yeah, and then but the, you're now hardly able to because no, your guy reflexes. But you're well. also spending the other hours binge eating. And wow. then the other hours you're starving. It's a living you're hell. Literally dying. It's a living hell. You're dying and it's a living hell. And this is normal. Like people that have eating disorders, this is their normal. And they're constantly Lord, anxious. Them tonight in Jesus' name. Right. Right. Yes. And and it's not normal. And you can get free. Yes. Right? So, so um, so you're like, I need to get, I need to recover. I need to recover. I can't do this anymore. And that's when I found your video because okay. I locked myself in there. People were kind of talking about, um, the awakening. They were kind of talking you guys about know it. The awakening was the revival that started at my house and ended up in a building when you came. But yeah. when we talk about the awakening, we're talking about the revival that I was leading and that yes. we were all getting yeah. saved at and everything. And, um, I was coaching at St. Mary's. One of my cheerleaders actually invited me to, to the service and I was Catholic. So I really thought like, I knew, I knew yeah, what was like, going on. Go and show them. Yeah. I was like, I know what I'm doing. So anyways, I'm, I'm in my room at night. I'm super embarrassed. I have no friends because I'm gaining weight rapidly and I'm probably really embarrassing to look at. I, my, my cheerleading team was going two worlds, which is like the Olympics of cheerleading. And I walked out on the team. We own the gym, by the way. Okay. And center flyer, all the things. And I walk into practice and I'm like, I quit. And everyone was like, you're joking. You own the gym. Well, How people pay quit? thousands of dollars to be on this team, to go to where we're going. And I'm all of a sudden just like, all right, I'm out. Oh. Right. But I had to survive. And I was like, I can't do this. So I walk out, I quit. And you know, there's the whole keep going. I quit and I'm in my room, Isaiah, I would take food to my room, eat it, put the blanket over my head. And I would rock myself like this. Wow. Because the anxiety to vomit was so overwhelming. The temptation was so I could not function. This is as you're trying to recover. This is as I was trying to going, recover. I'm not going to vomit. I'm not going to vomit. You're yeah. Just psychotic like it's wow. it's it felt like psychosis i was literally shaking like a psychotic person and i found your youtube video i don't know how i did but i remember just like watching it in the middle of the night and i don't remember i don't remember understanding anything that you said yeah especially then i was i was uh, talking a million miles yeah. an hour and nothing. you guys this is this is all i would hear and i'm like this this guy isn't even breathing yeah. you know but really I still get that <laughs> what fascinated me, Isaiah, was that like I knew that I was doing everything. And mind you, I worked for one of the largest cheerleading companies in the world. I had everything at my fingertips prior to this moment. So I knew what it was to have everything that you could possibly work for and attain mm. in the world. Had the money, had the guys, had the fame, thousands of followers, all the things. And yet I'm like dying, <laughs> you know, no one knows that, yeah. but you're like dying. So when I saw this guy on that video, I was like, whatever he has is is better than what i have mm. 
And obviously there's something outside of this that exists. Wow. Because I was like, this is the creme de la creme. This is it. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm seeing this person on, like you're literally like full of life. And I'm just like, and there's, and I do hear the shouting in the video and I'm like, th all of a sudden I just get so zoned into wow. the videos. I'm so, so I totally get it when people are like, I found you Isaiah and they're so pumped. Cause that was me. That yeah. was me. So, so anyways, um, I'm thinking I'm going to go to the church and I don't know why I thought this, but I thought that Christians were like a different type of alien. Mm. Like, I know how you say you thought they smelled funny. Yeah. I literally thought that. And I don't know why you I thought that a, a, an alien. I thought that Christians wore like, uh, Amish dresses. Oh, really? And I thought they wore bonnets <laughs> and I thought they wore no makeup. So you guys, so I'm, I'm recovering from this eating disorder. Right. And I'm literally like, I'm gonna let go of this whole world that I'm in. I'm gonna just, I'm, I was so excited. You we were like riding donkeys and horses and carriages. <laughs> Isaiah, and... I threw all my makeup away. And then you came and everyone was wearing makeup. I started like, wearing what? dresses. I was like, I'm gonna find the like most Amish looking clothes and I'm gonna be a Christian. Wow. Like I was just so excited, Isaiah, about this other life being possible. Mm. Because I knew, you know what I mean? I like I was that. like, there has to be another, like I'm gonna this... be that. I was so pumped. I was yeah. so pumped about that because I was dying. So I'm like thinking I'm going to go to this church, right? So I go to the church down my road, down the road. And mind you, Isaiah, like, can I go here? Is it okay yeah, if I yeah, go here? Yeah, okay. So um, I'm Catholic and, you know, I'm like, I know this Jesus thing. And I walk in and there's no Jesus on the cross. <laughs> First of all, I'm like blasphemy. Yeah. Like, where's Jesus on the cross? And I'm super religious. That's something that like God delivered me of later. Yeah. And I thought that people were going to be, you know, no makeup, whatever. I thought I, I was 50 pounds overweight at this time. Mm. So I was a hundred pounds. Say that again. I was hundred pounds. And then I went up to 150. Okay. So, so yeah, you're, I was, you were super tiny and then you and went then to I normal blew weight. I, yeah, I know. I know it was normal weight. weight. Yeah. But I was really embarrassed. Yeah. Very embarrassed because I couldn't fit in anything. Yeah. And so I'm thinking that Christians aren't pretty. So great. I'm just yeah. going to go to this place where no one's pretty. And I'm like, they can't judge me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Alyssa's laughing. She was there at the church. So I walk in, no Jesus on the cross. And the people were beautiful and they looked normal. They had makeup on. They were glowing, mm. like glowing. Like these girls that I was looking at were glowing. And I was wow. just like, this is not what I was expecting. Like, what is this place? And people were jumping and they were shouting and there was music playing. And I'm like trying so hard to fit in and pretend like I know what I'm doing. But I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> like, what is going on? Like, I don't understand this. And then this like Mexican guy's up there and he's like, come to the altar, come to the altar, come to the, for like 20 minutes. Was it Nino? Or yeah, Nino? it was Nino. <laughs> I'm with this Mexican guy. And, uh, I mean, I heard you, but I was used to hearing you yeah. because of the video. So I knew what I was getting into. I'd never seen this Mexican yeah. guy and I'd never heard those words come to the altar. Mm. So, and that's all he said for 20 minutes. Like, come to the altar. Tonight's your night. Come to the altar over and over. And I'm like, okay, well, I go or I leave. Mm. And I'm like, I can't, I can't leave. Like, I can't just, I came, I, I knew I came expecting. Yeah. I didn't know what I was expecting, but I came for something. So I go and I go to the altar and actually I wanted so badly, Isaiah. I think it was actually, no, I think there was like a guest speaker that night. I don't think it was you, to be honest. I, I'm trying to remember because I started coming pretty consistently after that, but I wanted someone to look at me and point me out. Wow. I wanted someone to go, you are dying and you are hurting. I wow. like wanted them so badly to call me out. I would have loved that. And, and, and no one did. No one said anything. So that's when I was like, I should just come to the altar because he mm. kept saying that. So I go to the altar and remember, I'm thinking that Christians are ugly. They smell funny. They don't wear makeup and I'm not going to be judged. All these things because I'm super insecure, right? And I'm mm. overweight in my mind. So the last thing I needed was like, yeah, what happened next? Yeah. So I'm at the altar and I'm crying. I don't know what I'm crying about because I don't cry. Crying is a gift. Yeah. I did, but I'm crying. And this beautiful girl who smells like roses with like this long, luscious hair and minty breath. She's like, can I pray for you? And I'm like, no, <laughs> like you're supposed to be ugly. Yeah. Like you're not supposed to be beautiful and friendly. And I, so she starts praying for me. And I have no idea that people can hear from God. Mm. I have no idea that God talks to people. I don't know what the prophetic is. And she starts telling me, she's like, I feel like you one day, she starts prophesying over me. She says, you're going to speak 
to thousands of women. Wow. Mind you, I'm still struggling. Which right now there's 3,500 people watching. Yeah. So this is a prophecy being and, fulfilled. And this was Cherish. Yeah, my little yeah. sister. This yeah. is my little sister praying for her. And I, it was literally prophecy being fulfilled now, but I am, um, I She tells you you're going to be speaking before thousands I of couldn't fathom women? it because, yes, but I was either, I was either going to be, I remember in the moment I was choosing, I'm either going to be offended that somebody told her I was there and be like, oh, poor girl, poor, poor fat girl. Like mm. she lost it all. Go pray for her. That's what was going on in my head. Wow. So the demons are still telling yeah. you these people are yes. against you. and Yes. And, or it was like, or I had the other thing to say, this is God. And I just, I was like, this is God. Mm. So I kept coming back, kept coming back, kept coming back, kept coming back. And I got into like, you know, our church was pretty much a small group and community and I started reading the word and you were pretty, what, I mean, I'd, I'd love to talk about it. People think that you just preached on deliverance yeah. all the time. Yeah. You preached like sermons, you yeah. preached the word, you preached the Bible. And I remember there's something you said that changed my life. And you said, the Bible is alive. Mm. And that tripped me out because as a Catholic, we had Bibles, but we never read them. Mm. So I remember during my recovery, I was reading through the book of Exodus, which is crazy. It's super prophetic. I didn't know, you know, but I remember being like, oh my gosh, like tripping out as I read the Bible because it was coming alive to me. Mm. And I was like so hungry for the word of God. And in the church that we were at, it was like, you know, fasting was normal. Praying was normal. Yeah. We would we would meet in the church. The lights would be off. Music would be on. And I'm looking around. All I know to do is pray. It was yeah. a prayer culture. Yeah. It was like, I didn't have a choice to learn anything else. Yeah. It was just prayer. So I really do believe Isaiah that that helped heal mm. a lot of what was going on in me. It wasn't a church service where I just sat there and left the same. I mean, I had no choice but to get on my knees and start praying. That's what we did. Yeah. And so I think a lot of healing happened in that because I didn't get delivered yet. Yeah. But the voices went away. Mm. A lot of the stuff just like went away. And I started realizing like people don't hate me. I remember greeting. And for a while when people would walk in, all I would hear is how much they hated me, wow. how disgusting I was. And it was, again, normal. But I remember asking the Lord as I like developed a relationship with him, I'm like, is it always going to be this way? Am I always going to feel this way? Wow. And I'm hearing Cassandra Hale testify. I'm hearing Stevie testify. I'm hearing them talk about drinking and depression. And I'm like, none of that's normal. And it starts dawning on me that my whole life is not normal. Wow. And that there's really a different life that's available in this man, Jesus. Yeah. That you would always talk about. And I'm like, that's it. Like, I'm going 100%. After this Come man, on. I'm going to I'm going to do whatever these people are doing. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. And I did and my life started to slowly change. I mean, even my family was like, "What is wrong with her? I think everybody got this. You're in a cult." Yeah. Right? You're not drinking you're anymore. Prayer, you're not you're smoking not anymore. Drugs. You're not depressed anymore. You're not hurting yourself anymore, but you're going to prayer meetings. You're going to revivals. And now you're, you're in traveling a cult. out of the city. Now you're in a cult. And now I'm in a cult. Yeah, because you're not yeah. doing drugs and not drinking. Exactly, and exactly. And, and and you're reading your Bible and all those things. So I've kind of fast forward through that. I want to talk about, you know, salvation yeah, and, and deliverance there. And finding so, out you needed deliverance. Yeah, actually, um, because you didn't, you never preached. Like, I, I love that people are like, oh, Isaiah was just the demon guy. Like, you preached the word of God, Yeah, you know? And and I also want to say this too, like, the radical Isaiah that we see on, on live stream, or I remember when you first did the revival in Modesto in 2020, 2021, after the pandemic, and it was like lines all the way out down yeah. the street. I remember hearing people saying they came from like super far away yeah. and it was like crazy for me. Cause I'm like, this is like our regular pastor yeah. that like we're used to being with all the time. And people are like talking about you. And I'm like, Isaiah has preached this way, whether there was one person mm. in the room or whether there were thousands, the same Isaiah that I saw at that revival, the same is the same guy I saw when we'd have 20 people show up for service. Yeah. You did not quit. Like at all. And that, so I just wanted to mention that to people as little heresy hunters. Sometimes I, I want to punch them in the face. <laughs> like I seriously want to fight back with the trolls all the time. And I'm like, don't do yeah. it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because I know you and I've seen your life and witnessing your life, Nico's life, Alyssa's life, Cherish's life, your parents' life. I've seen your guys' generosity. It's touched my life. It's blessed my life. It, it makes me so mad <laughs> when yeah. I see this stuff. But I but that. I have to just like, okay, you know what? This is God. Yeah. And, and God's going to keep doing what God's doing. But yeah, I, I just had to you. say thank that. So. That. Appreciate that. Absolutely. So, yeah. So going back to, uh, you know, services, regular yeah. services, deliverance. I didn't know that uh, I had demons at all. 
And I remember we went through this kind of phase at the awakening where it was like, <laughs> you guys might remember this, all leadership has to go through deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. We were all like, we were having some issues. We're like, everybody's getting delivered. <laughs> yeah. And people started freaking out. Yeah. We were like, I don't know if I want to go here anymore because it starts challenging you. Yeah. You know? Um, and mind you, we're all serving because we are all, who's going to do it? Like, Alyssa, you sing. Okay. You're worshiping. Nico, you do that. Okay. You're doing that. Yep. Isaiah, you do that. You're I was doing it. Drums. Isaiah, literally, like, Isaiah would be. I play drums and then preach. Yeah, you'd be at practice rehearsing and then you'd get ready for service and then you'd do service and then, sorry, then you'd do drums and then you'd do service and then you'd do altar call and then you're with us and then we go out and it's like, people think that- Then I was that, running in the back doing the soundboard. Right, and people think Turn that- up. Yeah, people think that you just like became like this YouTube sensation. Yeah. It's like your faithfulness has been like this for years. Yeah, we did that for 10 years. Yes. Not shy of 10 when years. When all we had was like a wall light, yeah. you know? Like we, we didn't like, have all said, this. Like, Jesus is you know? Lord. Like, we had a huge banner that said Jesus is it Lord. It wasn't even our banner. And they wouldn't let us change it. It was a church's banner. Yeah. Like, it wasn't even the ours. The church we rented from wouldn't let us change it. We're like, oh, we like it, but. Yeah, like so, sorry, I'm just- no, you're good. It is just, it's, it's, it's surreal to see what God has done. And, and I'm so grateful, but yes, going back to that. Um, yeah. So we ever all had to go through deliverance and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go through it. So I go through it and I'm with the head honcho, man. I'm, I'm with Nunez, right? I'm like, oh, for sure. Things are going to leave, you know, nothing manifested. Okay. Your first okay? deliverance. My first deliverance. Yeah. I'm like nothing manifested. So people that go through their first deliverance and nothing happens, Preach. keep going, keep going, keep getting, get closer to the Lord Yes. and then make those things uncomfortable and you'll probably, you know, come out. So now let me ask you during yeah. this time where you're going for deliverance, nothing manifests. W did all the stuff stop with the voices, the cutting, the eating disorder? Now you're in church. You're greeting, you're getting involved. Is all that stuff, you're not doing any Everything of that? Everything except perversion stopped. Okay. So, so you're just having perverted thoughts. I would walk into the church and I would have perverted thoughts that every guy was staring at me. Okay. Like I couldn't look at you in the eyes. Yeah. I mean, Nico probably didn't know this. Couldn't look at him. I couldn't, it, I didn't know it. I yeah. didn't know it then. I know it now. Yeah. But then I couldn't look at men. Okay. I think the only guy I really could look at was Nino because he was like a father. Yeah. And he was like helping guide me through my, you know, walking out my salvation. Yeah. But um, the voices went away, the cutting went away. So when people say I cannot stop unless I get delivered, here's my little challenge to that: the Holy Spirit within you. Is Which, greater. by the way, this is the girl that runs our deliverance map. So she's all for deliverance. <laughs> yes. So don't yes. Be like, oh, she's I'm all for it. deliverance. She's no. all for it. I'm she all for deliverance. Map. But I do believe that if you get closer to Jesus yes. and that you trust in the Holy resist Spirit, the resist the devil, that God will help you. You still need deliverance yes. because, like, it will come back. It'll peak its head up. Yeah. It'll be like all of a sudden you get in a fight with your pastor and you're leaving church and you're starting your own church. Because you never dealt with that root of abandonment or an orphan or rejection, right? So you got to go through it. Yeah. But to say like, I can't unless these demons leave. It's like, just, you got to go after Jesus, yes. go after Jesus and, and go after deliverance too. But you know, for me getting into community, praying, fasting, doing spiritual things was so helpful mm. for my freedom and for the healing that needed to happen. Because again, the deliverance, the, the, the demons didn't leave the first time. Yeah. But I, I look back now, Isaiah, because I remember Nunez asked me, he's like, I wonder why they didn't leave the first time. And to be honest with you, a lot of the things I was doing, I didn't know was sin. Mm. So like talking to guys while yeah. I was in a relationship, I didn't know. So I actually wasn't out of agreement with a lot of the stuff I was Good. doing as I was walking. And oh, the awakening was revival. Yeah. It was like fire hot, you know? So I, I learned quick what was sin. But I can only imagine people that are going to church where this isn't preached, right? Where holiness yes. isn't preached. So you're living a compromised life and you're wondering why you're demonized, mm. right? But I was getting fire hot preaching. So the cut was clear for me and it was fast. So I'm learning. I'm like, oh, that's sin. Oh, that's sin. Oh, you know, so I'm noticing all these things where I'm like, I can't be doing that. I can't be talking to guys. I can't be, you know, I was very manip manipulative, flirty, promiscuous, right? So all that had to go lying, even exaggerating, all yeah. of that. I'm like, oh, that has to go. You know, we, yeah. So all of that. Um, so I don't think I have demons. We're leading revival. Literally Isaiah's to my left. Nico's to my right. We're leading worship. Revival, amazing. I don't think I have demons. Yeah. You know, um, but then, they start talking about Jezebel. And and the talk of Jezebel started coming up a lot. And I think Nino Ben even had a book called yeah, Jezebel's we did like Back. like a little teaching on, a friend of mine wrote a book about Jezebel. And I did not want to get near that book. Wow. I didn't know, I had no idea that I didn't know I was demonized, but I just knew that I was scared of the book. Mm. And um, then when I would preach the gospel to my family, because I would tell my, I would tell my sister about Jesus and my jaw would start jittering. Mm. And I couldn't control it. And so, and I thought it was the Holy Spirit because I, I didn't know. Yeah. And then sometimes when we talk about deliverance, 
my hands would start uh, freezing mm. or demons. My hands would start getting cold. So then I remember one time being at like a house thing we were all at and this guy was talking and he says, Jezebel, I command you in the name of Jesus to get out. He was telling a de testimony, like a de deliverance testimony. And all of a sudden, Isaiah, the same voice that I would hear before, wow. I heard. And I don't think you were there, but like all of our church family was there. And I hear this voice and I'm sitting down. I hear the voice say, get up and move. And so I get up and I like move so my body. So he's telling a testimony saying, come out, Jezebel, Jesus' name, about a testimony. And you start hearing a voice saying, get up and move. Yes. Wow. Because I'm laying down like comfy with the family on like a couch. You know, we're all just chilling. He's just telling a test. He was just talking like it was yeah. normal for us to talk about stuff. But he was talking about like, you know, that spirit. And I hear her get up and move. And I'm like, and I hear the voice tell me to put my hand exactly where to put my hand, exactly how to sit. It's telling me how to move my body. Mm. And I'm like remembering that I used to do that when I was drunk. Like, you know, when you're drunk and you're slapping yourself in the yeah. face and you're like, I got this. I got this. It was like it was so I knew it wasn't my voice. Like it was like I felt like I was like. Where, where am I kind of thing, you know, kind of drunk almost feeling, which was probably like witchcraft, but yeah, anyways, that. And I did not want to look at that man in the eyes. I like, he kept talking and it was making me so uncomfortable. And I, did, I couldn't, I like didn't, I like, you know, awkwardly didn't want to look at him in the eyes. Yeah. So kind of time goes on, time goes on. And um, Isaiah, sometimes when I would worship, this is really important for worship leaders that haven't gone through deliverance, um, or need to go through deliverance. There were times where I would worship and I felt like I just was so close to the Lord. And then there were times where I would worship and I felt like he was so far away. Wow. Like there was just like a wall. Yeah. And I wasn't living in sin, right? I was going after God. I was in revival, but I felt like I could not get to God. Mm. And I felt like I was on a roller coaster. And I think I remember saying to myself, like, God is not a roller coaster. Like if you mm. feel like your faith feels like a roller coaster, something might be up. Because God is consistent. Yeah. Unless you're living in sin. Yeah. Right. It life shouldn't feel like a roller coaster. So that's what I was feeling. So I remember going to like a sister in the Lord one day, and I'm like, Hey, I just have a couple questions for you, and I just wanted to ask her why my jaw jittered. I just wanted to know, like, is that a normal thing? Is that the Holy Spirit? And at the time, you said something. You said when I pray, my hands feel warm, and other people would say it too, but I was like, my hands freeze, and I, mm. I start shivering, and like that's really weird. So I wanted to ask her. And she's like, can I pray for you? And I was like, yeah, sure. So we go into like a room in her house because we're just, you know, discipleship at the awakening was come hang out with me at my house, watch me do laundry, cook for my family. Like we were so tight knit, yeah. you know? And so um, she, she lays hands on me. And this is the most amazing part is I didn't expect deliverance. She lays her hands on me and she just starts speaking in tongues. And I see a wolf. Wow. I just see a wolf and it's like a flash. And I'm like, I see a wolf. I don't even know what's happening at this point. I'm yeah. just telling her what I see. She's like, okay, okay, okay. She just keeps praying. And she's like, are you full Filipino? And I'm like, y yes. Oh, I want to go back to the calling out to, sorry, I saw something. Oh, it's okay. Um, she's like, are you full Filipino? And I'm like, yes. And she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, then why do I see a Chinese dragon? And I was like, oh, well, my dad's family is Chinese. Wow. And so she starts going into things that I don't even know or can't even remember. And so it ends up being a full-blown deliverance, wow. like full-blown on the floor. When people are like, Marcella, because, you know, they see me worshiping. Yeah. Is that real when people are squirming all over the floor? And I'm like, bro, that was me. Yeah, like, like I was on, I was on a carpet for three hours, and all I saw was the carpet yeah. and a closet door for three hours. And it was like one of those deliverances where it's like they had to call angels down yeah. to hold me down. So I'm so grateful that I had that testimony too, because you see deliverances and you're like, is that real? Yeah, oh my gosh, it? they're they acting. acting. It's not that eccentric. You wait until you're on the floor Breach. and you're slithering and oh, come on, it's going to, oh, yeah. I hope it happens. Cause then you're just like, I can't deny that, yeah. you know? Um, but I do want to share this one part of the testimony. And Isaiah, this has really helped me to read the Bible with the fear of God. Mm. And it's helped me read the Bible knowing that I'm not going to always understand everything right away. Um, and I'm not, I don't need to be like, you know, Isaiah, I see these, these theologian buffs that try to challenge you on everything. And I'm like, man, God, I'm so thankful that you just wrecked my life. Yeah. And you encountered me because I would hate to have a stumbling block of what I didn't understand to get to you, mm -hmm. you know, in this way. Yeah. Right. Like I was just, I was wrecked. I was wrecked. My life was rocked and wrecked. So it's like, you can't tell me, right. Yeah. That God doesn't move. You can't tell me that God didn't say, you can't tell me God doesn't heal. You can't tell me that God doesn't, God doesn't deliver. deliver. It happened to me. Right. Like you can't tell me that didn't, I was cutting myself. I was you crying. You scars out. still. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, so 
she holds this Bible and it's like a thin, you know, King James Bible to my back. And all of a sudden, and I'll, I'll backtrack this the night before my husband has a dream. And this is when we're learning about deliverance. And he wakes up at 3 a.m. And he's like, I had a, a dream. Someone was manifesting. I freak out and I'm like, okay, pitch black dark. And I'm like, okay, super pride, prideful, by the way. I'm like, who was it, you know? And he's telling me it was like a, a supernatural dream. I'm thinking, Isaiah, that God was showing him me doing all this warfare. Yeah. Like me like slaying dragons and yeah. like being all awesome, you know? And he says someone was manifesting and they were in pain. And I said, okay, who so was it? So he's three in the morning. Your husband says, I have a dream. Someone was manifesting. And you're like. I'm like, it's me. I'm yeah. not, it's me. I'm casting out the you're demon. You're the one casting the demon showed, out of him. Yeah, because I was really prideful. Yeah. And I was like, God's showing him that I'm <laughs> slaying these demons. So then what does he say? And in the quiet of the night, he goes, it's you. Wow. I felt fear thicker than like darkness in the room. And I just humbly shut my mouth. Wow. And I just like try to go to sleep and I go to sleep. The day, the next day is the day that my deliverance happens. And wow. I don't even know it's going to happen. So when she, when, when the woman holds the Bible, she holds it to my rib cage. Super gentle. Wasn't pushing me. Nothing. She puts it to my rib cage. And Isaiah, I mean, I don't want to get out of the computer screen here, but I start melting to the ground and I'm going, ow, ow, ow. And I, I wasn't in pain. Like Marcella wasn't in pain, but the demons were screaming the same mm. thing that my husband had in his dream. And I remember Isaiah that um, the, the Bible felt like a big chunk of gold. Like, you know, those like big, I don't know if you've ever yeah. seen them. And no matter what strength I had in my body, I couldn't pa push back on it. Mm. There was nothing in me, not a fiber of my being could push back on the Bible. Wow. And, and it melted me all the way down to the gr ground where I was face flat on, on the ground for the rest of my deliverance. And so I wrote that in my, I literally have it in my phone because I was like, I never want to forget what that Bible felt like wow. on my back. Because when you witness that, like, you know, then you read Leviticus and you're like, I don't care what I don't understand. Yeah. He's God. Yeah. That's good. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. What I do and don't understand. He's God and he can do anything, all things, right? Like it, it's a sobering, easy, childlike when you experience something like that. Yes. But also just kind of going back to like um, being raised Catholic, I want to kind of circle back yeah. on that. You know, I did cry out to Mary when I was uh, vomiting and I was at the end of my brink because I couldn't continue because nothing was happening. Mm. I lost my gag reflex. I remember Isaiah, I went into my hallway and I cried out and I was so tired. This was before I came to church. I think I was like kind of entertaining the interest of it, definitely recovering. And I cried out and I said, Mary, Jesus, God, I, we prayed to like Joseph, you know, okay. we prayed to different saints. I, Honestly, I joke about it. And I'm like, I probably threw Buddha in there. You're just calling everybody. I was so desperate. I, w I even got a tattoo on my wrist and it says fighter. Wow. Is that this? And has an eating disorder symbol because I wanted to recover. Mm. I was trying so hard to recover with everything in me and I couldn't. So when I was crying out, I, I had faith that someone was going to hear me. Mm. I just didn't know who was going to answer. And literally in that season is where I found the awakening. Wow. Yeah. And so I, I, I think of it this way, like, you know, you cry out to God and the only one that answers is Jesus. Mm. No one else answers. Come on. When you're going through that and it's literally life or death, people cry out to Jesus. There's only Jesus comes. You can, you know, your whole life, you can worship all these things and you might feel things and experience things. But when it's life or death and you cry out to God, there's only one that comes. So good. And I remember Pastor Jaden did a sermon recently about it. And he said, like, you know, someone standing on an island, you don't want to receive Jesus. This Jesus comes by on a boat. He reaches out his hand and you're like, why do I have to choose you? Why do I have to pick you? Right. The, the person saying that to Jesus and Pastor Jaden says, because and then, you know, that Jesus says, because I'm the only one coming. Ooh, I felt that. Wow. She, I wept. We wow. have four services at Life Song. It was like the first service that I heard that I was in the hallway and my body was I'm like leaning against coming. the wall. I couldn't move my body. Like, I'm pretty sure I was like trying to fight. Like just, I couldn't get up because I realized that he was talking about the man that saved my life. Mm. Because a lot of people, you know, they might read the Bible and then they learn about Jesus. I learned about Jesus because he saved my life. Come on. So now when I'm reading the Bible, I'm learning about a man that saved me. 
come on. You know? And so it's like, I don't know all the answers. And so when I'm reading stuff, I'm like, I don't know. All like I know that is that he blind saved and they me. Said, when did it, how did it happen? He kept, after like two or three times, they questioned his parents. He was like, all I know is I was blind and now I see. That's they were all I asking know. theological questions. Is he the savior? Did he claim to be the Messiah? Yeah. And he's like, I don't know the theology. I just I know, know I was blind yeah. and now I see. And I think yeah. so many people get stuck in the theology of it. Or what is the doctrine? Or how could a Christian have a demon? Could they yeah. not have a demon? How could the Holy Spirit live in the, and all this theology and these mm -hmm. doctrines? But at the end of the day, it's like, dude, I don't know. Yeah. I just know I was demonized. Like you are really, really dying. Yeah. And God came and delivered you. And this is... Hearing your story, it makes my heart break for all the pastors out there that always preach about, you don't need deliverance, deliverance isn't for today, you don't need it. All I could think about to these pastors is they're out of touch. They're mm -hmm. out of touch with the real hurting, broken people yeah. that are right now in pain watching this, what yeah. you went through. Imagine you go to a church where the pastor's like, well, you don't need to get deliverance. You would have just lived your life, medication, and there's people, 4,000 people on here, a lot of them are going through that not realizing mm -hmm. you got saved, yep. God changed your life, but there was an element of getting that deliverance. Yeah. Your husband's saying, I had a dream. Yeah. And you're like, oh, was I casting on demons? He's like, no, you were actually the one getting delivered. Yep. And then the next day you get delivered yeah. and here you are worship leading, running yeah. the deliverance map. I do want to say podcast. that um, when I was driving home that night after the three and a half hour deliverance, Isaiah, and I say this with all humility because I honor all past. I I wouldn't. I don't know what it's like to be a pastor, yeah. right? Like I know that that's a lot of pressure. I'm I'm not trying to you know be rude in any way, but I had heard a pastor, and it wasn't you, uh, say that Christians couldn't have demons. Yeah, and it was a one that I looked up to, you know. And I remember driving home that night, and I asked myself, like, Am I even a Christian? Mm. And I say I gave my whole life up. Yeah, like when we were at the awakening, it was like. It was like you're fire hot, yeah. or you're just, or you're not. Yeah. Like, it's or you're like, not, and you're not coming. <laughs> you're fire hot, or you're not. Like, you know, you're a saint, or you ain't. Like, it's really, yeah. really, really. It was really clear. It was really clear if we were following Jesus or we weren't. And a lot of people didn't do well with that because, like Jesus says, count the cost. Yeah, you know, and that's really brutal for some people. But Jesus says to count the cost. And at the awakening, we were always ch challenged to count the cost. Yeah, you know. And so, anyways, um, which is crazy. I want to touch on what you said. Yeah. You said. You, you heard a pastor say Christians can't have demons, mm -hmm. so you doubted your salvation. I doubted my salvation. And this is so, to me, sad how yeah. in America or around the world, you, you need deliverance, you need freedom, you have a demon as a Christian. You go to your pastor, who's supposed to be the one fighting for you, yeah. praying for you, the, the I'm not a hireling, I'm the sh true yeah. shepherd, I lay my life down for the sheep, yeah. John 10, I, I'm not going to run from the wolf, I'm fighting the wolf. And you come to your pastor, you say, pastor, I've dealt with this when I was a kid, like everything you've went through. Yeah. And then the pastor goes, well, maybe you're not saved. Like that's because you don't believe, because most pastors don't believe Christians get out of demons. So they would say, oh well, you gosh. must not be a Christian. So now mm -hmm. instead of attacking the demon, you, atta go you ahead. attack my salvation. Go ahead. Now the devil's not the problem. I'm so grateful I didn't go to a different church. It's like now I, would, I would probably not be a Christian. It's like now the devil's not the problem. Instead yeah. of putting him on the, on the stand saying, okay, let's question this demon. I'm on the stand. Now, I'm not That's a Christian. That's so sad. And I have friends that are preachers that they literally preach, if you have a, if you manifest a demon, you're not a true Christian. That is so sad. Because a Christian can't have a demon. Well, here's what I struggled with, crazy. Isaiah, is that I literally was living a life that was, like, pure, like, before yeah. God. I yeah. really love the Lord. Like, and, you know, we went to church together. So you saw me. I mean, yeah. we were always together because we always had prayer. Like, we, yeah. you know, I think we were always together. Our, yeah. our whole church was always together. Uh, we did, you know, baby showers together, yeah. weddings together. Everything. And um, it really, I, I, this is honestly, I'm being very honest about what I ask myself. And so pastors that are, do hopefully, by the grace of God, watch this, this is what you're doing to somebody yes. that I literally, I said to myself, well, then what more do I have to do to become a Christian? Mm. And if it is, then I don't know if I could do it. Because I literally have done everything. I've mm. done, I've given up my whole life. I, I, you would always preach, do not look back. I did not look back. I probably have cheer friends on here that when I left out of the world, Isaiah, I left. They probably thought I died. Wow. I did not look back. I took what you, you said. You literally did die. I did die. Yeah. I, I literally did die and was yeah. born again. But it took a pastor. And I'm not saying that, I mean, you are a good friend of mine. You are definitely a trumpet in my life. But I really took what you said literally. Yeah. Like when you would speak at the pulpit, I took it as if it was coming from the mouth, mouth of God. And it was a word of God. Yeah. But you would say, you know, don't go back. Don't look back. There's nothing to go back to. I believed you. I took you out. I'm like, there's nothing to go back to. I left all of that. And I've never looked back once. Mm. If anything, people from the past come and they get yeah. saved, yeah. you know, but, um, I, 
at, at that time with the whole like, am I a Christian? Am I not a Christian? There was nothing more that I could have done, Isaiah. I was really, truly living a life before God. Yeah. So it's not like you could even challenge. I, I believed by faith, you know, and grace yeah. that I was saved. But not only that, I was on an on-fire church. I was serving in my church. I loved my church. I honored my church. So you you say that to somebody like that with that kind of past. And it's like, well, what hope is there for me to be a Christian? Yeah. So it's like, that just doesn't make sense that Christians can't have demons. I was three years into my salvation when I got set free. Wow. Yeah. Three years. Three years. God delivered you. And God delivered me. Yeah. And I, even one point I shared this with you guys before when I got God and and God even delivered me when I wasn't with a person. Mm. So one time, and I shared this with him before, but I want to share it with the stream. Uh, Nico and Isaiah, they did worship. We all did worship together. And you know, when in the summertime, it's hot in Manteca. And I remember you strolling into church, you know, you're, you're not always the serious, like, you know, you're, you're a funny dude, you know, yeah, you're like, a, you know, posting some funny clips. You're People just are like, like a, oh, you're a normal person. He's a normal person that, you know, wears cut off tank tops and <laughs> drinks energy did. drinks. Did. Yeah. So did. you're coming in and you're coming in, you know, drinking pra- energy worship drink. Worship practice. Worship practice. Okay. Uh, and Nico's there and Nico's, I don't know if you guys know him, but he's super funny. Their whole family, I told them they need to be on the stream together because they're hilarious. Like Cherish is like, she should be a stand-up comedian. Like so Our funny. Family is funny. So funny. So um, you guys were joking around with each other and I got so mad. Wow. Like I wanted you to come in the church like singing hymns. Mm, super religious in. spirit. Yeah. I didn't know that at the time, but I was like mad that you weren't reading the Bible and like reciting scriptures. Wow. Yeah. And I felt so, I was so mad at you. This is before you got this delivered. Bef- yes. Before I got delivered. Like well, I think hit- it was like after my major deliverance, but more happened after my major deliverance. Yeah. So I go to bed that night and I remember rehearsing one John one nine. I didn't even know I memorized it and I was rehearsing it, rehearsing it. If we confess our sins to you, you're faithful and just to cleanse of, uh, cleanse of our righteousness, and forgive us from our sins. I woke up the next morning, went to GNC, doing the till, totally normal, bend over, vomit, lift up my head, and I'm like, what was that? Straight up just delivered. Wow. Yeah, from that like lack of joy. I wow. really feel like it was like a lack of joy. Yeah. I don't know what kind of demon that would be. Yeah. I don't know, but lack of joy. Religion, spirit of religion. Reli- yeah, spirit of religion. But then kind of fast forward, you know, if Christians can't have demons, go back to, you know, 2021. And I, we actually parted, went to it, not parted. We, we went a different route, yeah. went to Life Song, which is super funny. I just have to say, when I saw coffee machines in a green room for the first time, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> Because Isaiah at the awakening, like our goal was to be as uncomfortable as possible. Like in the prayer rooms, we would remove f- furniture just to pray. Yeah. You know, like get uncomfortable. So Isaiah would come back from like all these like churches and he'd be like in the green room. And oh, yeah, they preaching. have a coffee machine and da da da. And we don't have coffee machines. You know, we don't have a green room. We have a hallway. Like yeah. well, the worship team's like standing in the hallway before church starts. And we're like, yeah. we do, can we go out now? So you talk about green rooms and all these people, you know, like not, not saying bad things, but sometimes people are in the church, you yeah. know, but they're not in Christ. And so you just would, that's all I would hear about coffees and greeners. I walk into Life Song that's like, in my eyes, a mega church, right? Yeah. I don't know them, by the way. I don't know a Life Song yet at the, at, at, the, at the time. And they're all watching, by the way. I so walk in, right? I walk in. No pressure. <laughs> I see a coffee machine and I'm like, I'm here to die. <laughs> like, I literally thought that I was going to die in like Hilarious. church religion and then, you know, ends up being complete revival and yeah. God totally knew what he was doing. Now you're a worship leader there. And now I'm a worship leader there. And I even remember, I said, I didn't know you were going to be there at the service. But um, I was in the um, audience and I, I would get wrecked during the worship services there. I wasn't planning on making it my home church. Yeah. I was just like attending because Kelly Hale, shout out to Kelly Hale and Kelly RJ. Kelly Hale, the evangelist, got Man, us there she too. really We're is. All there she really Kelly is. Hale, we love you. Um, we stayed for Jesus. We came for Kelly and stayed came for, for Kelly, Jesus. Came for Kelly, stayed for, you know, came for, came for the Easter service. Yeah. But um, so I remember the Holy Spirit saying, weep a season past. And I want to just kind of minister to people that maybe you're in the church and God's moving you in a new direction or whatever. Good. And, um, you know, I loved the awakening. Yeah. You know, Nino was like such a pivotal person in my life. As a worship leader, he yeah. said this to me. I remember talking to him about my insecurities as a worship leader. And he said, Miha, I didn't put you up there. The Lord did. Mm. And that put the fear of God in me as a worship leader. But letting go of that season was really hard. I wanted yeah. to hold on to all of the... It was like a death for it was. A, it really was. But I heard the Holy Spirit... Like I stayed close to him the whole time. And he said, weep a season past. Mm. And I was like, what? And he's like, it's okay. You can cry. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So I was weeping. Right. And I'm like, am I just going to die in religion? Like what's going to happen? Yeah. You know? Cause I was used to like fire revival, altar calls, you know, all the things. And I look over to my left and I see you and the family and I just feel the Lord. And I heard the Lord say like, I'm here. Wow. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'm doing a new thing. Wow. 
And I was like, okay, I'm all in. I, I'm all Amazing. in. Like if you're here, then I'm all in. And then they asked me to lead worship, all the things. But I do want to kind of also go to this. Worsh deliverance didn't just happen that one time. Mm. Um, I actually in 2021, and I want to be super open about my testimony because there might be other people out there. Yeah. I'm not afraid to throw myself under the bus because it's like, what do I have to lose? Yeah. Right. Like what pride to salvage. I, what pride to salvage. For sure, all our testimony, it's like, who cares? Who cares, right? So um and that's just the beautiful thing about being a Christian is you don't have to lie about your life. You don't have to hide anything, right? You're alive in Christ. You're made new in Christ. There's no shame, any of that. So yep. I share this from a place of absolute victory. But I was in the green room and I don't know if anyone knows Pastor James, but he's like, he wouldn't hurt a fly. Yeah. Like he's the nicest guy. I totally. Our I pastor's make, literally the nicest guy you'll I, ever I meet. I make the funniest joke ever. And I tell people that he reminds me of Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Like, he's very, be my neighbor. Very like, nice. he's just like the coolest. If you've been nicest a wife's guy. on, you are like, yes, Pastor He's the James best. Is super he is amazing. the best. Yes, yeah, awesome. That's one of the reasons why we go there too, but go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. And so I'm sitting across from him, and the door closes in the green room, and all of a sudden, Isaiah, I feel massive anxiety. Mm. And I'm like, I know I'm in a safe place. Like, I know him. And I start feeling major feelings of perversion. Mm. I'm leading on his on the platform. Yeah. Like I'm, I've been leading worship for how many years now? So, and you're telling me a Christian can't have a demon. Yeah. What, what would happen, Isaiah, if I believed Christians couldn't have demons? Would I just live like that forever? Wow. Would I just be around men of God and have perverted thoughts forever? I wouldn't mm. be able to sit here wow. without trying to dodge those thoughts. And that's what life was like. Yeah. So I knew I was like, I have to, I have to, I have to go in for deliverance again. So even if you're a leader and you're on fire for God, so it doesn't make you any less on fire for God. If anything, you're getting closer to God. And he's like, all right, let's get all of it out. You yeah. know, let's. So I feel like a lot of people have a connotation of shame. Like, oh, you need deliverance because you're from the street or you're from the world. I've been saved six years, seven years now. And this was, you know, a year ago. So yeah. saved six years, you know, loving the Lord fully. And I, I just feel like it's so dangerous to say that to people yeah. because then people by shame, because they love the Lord and they yeah. don't want to embarrass their family or whatever, having demons. But I knew better because I was already ministering in deliverance. I'm like, I'm getting the freedom. Yeah. I'm not playing around. Like, yeah. I'm going to sit in front of this man of God. And I'm going to feel safe in front of him. Yeah. So I went after it. And lo and behold, I actually never really dealt with the molestation. Yeah. So I talked about it kind of in the foreword of this testimony, but I really didn't start dealing with it until the more mature time of my salvation. Which is where that, like you were saying, the perversion stuff st stems from. Yeah. And people have that, even people yeah. watching, they've been through one deliverance and they're dealing with that and they're like, well, I already was delivered, but you may not have been delivered from everything. Yeah. You may, you may still have something there and that's a telltale right. sign. I tell people if you're having, that's how I know I needed deliverance. I was oh, having wow. the most perverted, bizarre. And when I say perverted, I don't mean just like normal. I mean like bizarre to where I was like, this has to be a spirit. There's wow. no, I couldn't even think of how disgusting these thoughts are in my head. That's how I knew, okay, I need to get. And then as I was sharing my faith, I was mm -hmm. feeling something growling out of me. Mm -hmm. I was feeling something tightening my chest and my yeah. jaw, same thing. Yeah. And, but I knew I was like, these thoughts are not mine. There's only three voices. There's the Holy spirit. There's a demonic spirit and there's my own human spirit. Mm -hmm. So if my human spirit's not making these thoughts, doesn't yeah. want these thoughts. The Holy Spirit's not gonna give me a perverted, crazy thought. And yeah. again, we're talking about this because there's ton of, tons of you dealing with this. And then I'm thinking, okay, then there must be a demonic spirit there giving yeah. me these perverted thoughts, these perverted desires. So yeah. and I think if that, you're going through that, man. Yeah, I think free. that when you are going through that and you don't have people giving this type of conversation, that's why, you know, Vlad, you never Mike, about this you guys are all being out there and people are like, oh, they're talking about it too much. It's like, you guys are saving people's lives because people are in church and they're having these thoughts yeah and they're super ashamed yep and a lot of these people have platforms yeah i had i mean isaiah people are just like oh you're you know they are even just so kind they'll be like oh you're my favorite worship leader you know just like being super sweet and stuff i could only imagine what hearing all that right and then going home and feeling all the trash that i was feeling yeah and feeling like it was always going to be that way isaiah i couldn't imagine living like that yeah i you know, we hear of the tragedies that happen to people, you know, leaders and stuff that take their life. And it's like, this is not normal yeah. for you to have thoughts that you, it would be better if you ended it, that, you know, you're worthless, you're disgusting. You throw up, when you, you, you cut yourself, When you hear yourself. those things, when we say them, they sound crazy. Yeah. Like if you say it out loud, we're like, what? Yeah. But when you're hearing them, it sounds so close. Yeah. And, and because you aren't getting the language of these are demons, you're super ashamed that you're even feeling that mm, way. 
Yep. And so you don't say anything. Yeah, absolutely. And then you keep going for prayer. You keep going for prayer. You keep going for prayer. People are praying for you. Nothing's happening. You're not you getting just better. You better, be a better Christian. And, Maybe you're not and really then a there's even more shame. Yeah. And so, so what, where do you go with that from that? So I feel like, I feel like God's just like, I've had it. Like we're not, you know, I can only imagine how his heart breaks that we're not talking about deliverance yeah. that we're not giving people an option of a way out because when people are born again, you're really born again. Yeah. Like a new, my whole life, new life. I mean, yes, I like listen to the word and I stuck to the word. There's nothing to go back to, but God, like how we talked about high school and stuff, Isaiah, I couldn't count before I got saved. So what do mm. I mean by that? I couldn't count money, like numbers to me. Like when you're demonized, when there's specific demons on board, you can't think. Yeah. So if you were to say, Marcel, I'll see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Isaiah, I mean this, I'm, I'm being honest before the Lord. I couldn't compute what 4 p.m. tomorrow would even be like. Wow. Like like time. Yeah. Like, okay, so we're going through the night. We're going through the morning. 4 p.m. is in the afternoon. Isaiah, I couldn't wow. compute time. I couldn't count 20% off of $200. Blank. Blank. I was going into nursing school, right? In salvation. I still needed deliverance, right? This is like after deliverance, my mind's brilliant. I do podcasts. I do yeah. photography. And people are like, how do you do all these things? I'm like, because my mind is made new and it's whole. Wow. And it's it's not wounded. So... But, you know, prior to, you'd bring up numbers, I'd black out immediately. Couldn't, and I thought I was stupid. Wow. And people believe that. They think that they're stupid because they can't think. You probably have a demon on board. And no one would ever think, and this is why we're talking about this. This is so important. No one would ever think, oh, that's a demon right. causing me to be lose track of time. Or like we hear this all the time, I have yeah. a, spirit, a spirit of confusion. It's like people say, I don't know what time it is. I lose track of time. It's kind of like two hours goes by. It feels like 15 minutes yep. or three hours go, three yep. minutes goes by. It feels like two hours. Mm -hmm. These are unclean spirits that are causing all of these things in our yep. life. And people think it's normal and it's not normal to be that way. Not normal. And, and, and another thing is like very important is demons are personalities. Mm -hmm. So like a spirit of anger is literally the personality of anger. Right. De demons are disembodied people, disembodied spirits. So like for uh, Ephesians chapter six, the new living Bible says persons without bodies. So mm -hmm. our, it says this, our wrestle is not against merely flesh and blood or that Greek would be like persons with bodies, but persons oh. without bodies. So if you start wow. thinking of demons wow. as these are actual persons, not people mm -hmm. as like I like we are like um, uniquely made, but these are persons, personalities that wow. don't have physical bodies, but they're still persons. Wow. So when we're talking about like demons, anger, depression, anxiety, perfection, mm -hmm. religion, confusion, Jezebel. People say, well, how could you have Jezebel and then she had Jezebel? Well, the, the spirit named Jezebel, that's mm -hmm. the spirit's personality. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's one demon of Jezebel. Right. It's the personality of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So people have like, let's say you're watching this, you have a spirit of like hatred or a spirit of suicide or a spirit of anger. Like that spirit is causing you to be that way because mm -hmm. it's inner it's intertwining mm -hmm. with your personality. But the mm -hmm. thing is, the demon is not going to go, oh, hold by, by the way, I'm the spirit of depression. Here right, I am. Because right. it knows you're just going to look up how to get a spirit out of me. So these right. spirits make you think that it, it's, you. it's you. It's you. And, and that's why it's you hate yourself so much. Their voice sounds like your voice. Yep. So now you hate the demon, mm -hmm. but you don't know there's a demon. Right. So you, instead, you hate yourself. Right. So you're taking that hatred that should be going towards the demon, going like, man, I hate these demons. Yep. But you're going, oh, this is just me. So yep. this is why... When people manifest, like tonight, people are gonna ma are manifesting. They're going like, mm -hmm. oh, "Why do I feel so angry? And why am I manifesting? Mm -hmm. And why in your church service I have a demon screaming out of me?" I had a lady come up and talk to me. She's like, "Yeah, I've been through deliverance." And as we're talking, she starts manifesting, and she starts wow. twitching, and she starts growling, and she's full of manifesting, mm -hmm. and she starts crying. I'm afraid. What's happening? I feel something. I told her, "Listen, this is beautiful." Yeah. And she said this to me, "How could this be beautiful? Mm -hmm. I'm growling. I'm angry. I'm a, a voice is telling me to kill you." As I'm mm -hmm. talking to her after yep. a service. I said, because now we know it's there. There we go. Now we know it's there. We can yeah. take care of it because the, there's a reason why every army uses camouflage. Like wow. no one goes to battle wearing neon, wow. right? Have you ever seen a, a soldier go with like, Here a, I am. like, yeah, like neon pink <laughs> signs and hey, like pink, Come uh, get me. a pink outfit. No one, mm -hmm. no soldier has ever done that. Every army utilizes camouflage wow. because there's wow. power in remaining undetected. Mm -hmm. There's literal power in being undetected. Yeah. So the devil camouflages himself. The worst thing that could ever happen is him to make you think for you to think he's real or for us right now to expose That's him it. and him manifest. Yep. So it's like, man, now I know he's there. And so the devil, unfortunately, mm -hmm. has used pastors and leaders yeah. to hide himself. Like, imagine saying oh, the devil. My imagine a pastor being like the devil. 
These are all unbiblical statements, by the way. But a pastor gets up and says, the devil has no power. The devil can't mess with Christians. The devil can't attack Christians. In my mind, I'm going like, why would he attack the world? The yeah. devil already owns the world. Yeah. He's the God of this world. So yeah. of course he wants to attack Christians. Mm -hmm. Of course he wants to. Like, if you don't believe the devil could attack Christians, go read the book of Acts. He literally killed Christians. Mm. The devil was using the religious people to kill Christians. That's a whole nother wow. sermon. But my point is, pastors are propagating this message that the devil's weak. The devil has no power. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. You read the Bible and the Bible says the devil's the God of this world. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he's the prince of the power of the air. The mm -hmm. Bible says he's the prince of demons. Peter says wow. he's like this. This is what Peter says. He's like this roaring, li roaring right, lion right. looking to devour somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. Peter says he's this lion trying to devour people. Jesus says he's the prince of the power of the air. He's the prince of demons. This is the God of the underworld, the world would call him. And mm -hmm. then pastors say the devil has no power. Mm -hmm. The devil uh, has no authority. Mm -hmm. He can't do anything. And if we come and say the opposite, which what the Bible says, mm -hmm. we, oh, you're empowering the devil, Isaiah. Mm -mm. You're empowering. No, we're being real. And we're going, these spirits, guys, you need yeah. to hear me when I say this. These spirits have been here for thousands of years mm -hmm. and our little coffee shop Starbucks Jesus mm -hmm. is not going to overthrow them. So we have to get out mm -hmm. of this. I wish, I wish that the devil had no power. I wish that yeah. the devil just couldn't right? mess with anyone. Dude. Wouldn't that just be the way we would be amazing. Yeah. But the reality is there's a real devil who the Bible says is the enemy of our soul. He's our adversary. So we're, we're, we're fighting against him. God's already defeated the devil. The devil in the sense of Jesus has been defeated. So his power and his authority, all that wow. Jesus has defeated him. But Jesus said, it is finished. Jesus didn't say you're finished. Come on. Jesus finished his Come job. On. But now we yeah. are at war against the power of darkness. Right. And, that, and the Bible says that. We right. are at war. You go all through the book of Acts, they're at war against the right. enemy. So this idea that the devil's like has no authority and he's in hell hiding in a corner mm -mm. somewhere. And, mm -mm. you know, we're, we preach all the time. We're overcomers, but we don't live like that. Like, how are we going to get there and preach, we're overcomers, the devil has no power, and then these same pastors right. are going and dating a girl yep. they met at the park. Right. These right. same pastors are watching pornography, yet they're oh, preaching, the devil has no power. It's like, man, we are in delusion, yeah. but but God is raising up mm -hmm. an army. God is raising up he people is, that are is. like, we're not afraid and of the know, enemy, we're Isaiah, not afraid of darkness. The, the, the whole thing is, too, is, is um, perishing from a lack of knowledge. Yes. Because what we start learning about in the supernatural is we start learning like the open doors. We yep. start learning how the enemy comes in. Not only does he have power, but there's access points. Yes. How can you be an overcoming Christian if you don't even know where the enemy is coming in from? Yes. Like, can you explain that to me? That's like, what kind of warfare strategy is that? Yeah. Right. So you, you know where the enemy is coming from. You look at blueprints of war. It's like, where are the attacks coming from? Where's where can the they intel? come? Where are they going to come breach things? Right. That is like a simple tactic of warfare, spiritual warfare. What, what, if that's not happening, if there's no access point for something to come in to breach something, then what is spiritual warfare then? Yeah. Right. And even so, your childhood, like, so the trauma you went through, right. Most people think they get a spirit, which again, it, it, think about it as a person without a body comes mm -hmm. and lives in you. Matthew 12, Jesus said they live in you. Right. Spirits call you their home. So right, they come right. as a personality. It's like, imagine you have this angry, bitter friend. That's just always angry, always bitter terrible personality and that friend comes and lives in you and now you become like your friend that's what mm. spirits are they're literally persons without bodies that's why yeah. they come and say my name's so-and-so i'm there's literally right. spirits with names of people right so right. the spirit without a body comes and lives inside of you and people live their life with another person in them and mm -hmm. then some it gets mm -hmm. way worse because they have 10 they mm -hmm. have 20 yeah they mm -hmm. have 30 i and you had multiple i mm -hmm. had i had i think 11 or 12 mm -hmm. different personalities yep. living in me. So one time I'm lustful, the other time I'm angry, the other time I'm shameful, the other time I'm bitter, the other time I'm all these per and no wonder we're exhausted. Yep. No wonder we live our lives exhausted because yeah. we're we're managing 10 different people it in us. It is very exhausting. 15, 15 different yeah. people. And then we go to the doctor and yep. God bless every doctor, every nurse. We bless you. We love what, what you're doing. We appreciate right. you. But you do what you do. We do what we do. Mm -hmm. Like you can only take people so far. If it's medical, praise the Lord for right, you. Right. But we deal with, we don't deal with the medical. We We're deal with the spiritual. spiritual. We deal yep. with a realm that can't be seen with a naked yep. eye and can't be diagnosed with some test tube or some, mm -hmm. you know, formula or mm -hmm. let's scan your brain. And so we're dealing with things. So how do we deal with these personalities mm -hmm. in people? Think about this, how crazy this is. 
Medication won't do anything. It'll just quiet them down. It'll mm. just numb you. Yeah. So medication can't do it. So we know doctors can't deal with it. If it is yeah. a demon, a doctor right. can't deal with it. Right. Our family does can't, people can't deal with it. I can't do anything about your demons. I can't right. do anything about, there's no way. I can't make a way for you to go from being cutting and depressed to now free. Right. And, so then Jesus comes and goes, for all of history, people have been living with these spirits. Yeah. In the Old Testament, Jesus brought them out of bondage. In the New Testament, Jesus brings the bondage out Come of them. Come on, he that's comes good. And says, that's for so thousands good. of years, you've just had to live with this, but wow. I'm actually going to do something about it. So Mark yeah. 1, Jesus is preaching. A man's in the synagogue, synagogue, not outside, not some, God bless all of you, but some drug addict on the corner. Right. There's a man in the synagogue pursuing the 630 plus laws, trying to live Living righteous. way holier than we are. Oh yeah. <laughs> People say like, oh, Christian can't have a demon. I'm like, dude, trust me, the Pharisees yeah. live way holier than you. Right. Like they were right. in the synagogue. Jesus starts getting up and teaching. And this man in the synagogue starts screaming out and a demon starts speaking out of him saying, what do you want? We hate mm -hmm. you. So Son of crying out, son of God, son of God, declaring his divinity, right? And everyone's freaking out. Jesus tells the demon to shut up because Jesus doesn't want the demon to reveal to tell, him before yeah. other people, right? Jesus delivers the man, and then this is what everyone says, which people are going to say, Well, our chat, not in our chat, but in other channels, yeah, they say, What new teaching is this? Like, this must be some new wow. doctrine because we're so far from wow. biblical Christianity mm -hmm. that now people think this is some new doctrine. Wow. So Jesus cast the demon out of the man, come out of him, right? Mm -hmm. Shut up, come out of him. Right. The demon comes out of the man. And then Mark 139 says something. It's one verse, but it's one verse that encapsulates a thousand testimonies. And the mm -hmm. one verse is, Jesus went from synagogue to synagogue casting out demons. How many demons? How many synagogues? Mm -hmm. How many, how long? Was it a month? Was so it two good. months? Was it a thousand demons? Did a thousand, we don't know, but we know there was a thousand testimonies in wow. one verse. Wow. So because it was only one verse, pastors are like, oh, it's no big deal. It's like, mm -hmm. hold on, you missed Mark 139. Jesus went from synagogue, synagogue to, to synagogue. synagogue. So where was he doing it at? Was it? And, the, and there is a place for, but he was in the, and now most people argue, well, there wasn't a modern day church. These were modern day yeah. churches. These were the God people right. that served them. Right. And then Matthew 23, right. Jesus looked at these same guys and goes, you guys are children of the devil because you've denied me. Right. You've, and right. then he's casting scary out demons thing. and they're calling Jesus the a devil. Dem right. They say, oh, you're full of a demon now. That even makes sense. About, and Jesus sense. is like, how could Satan cast out Satan? So all of that to mm -hmm. say, we massively need mm -hmm. the deliverance map. Yeah. Massively. We massively need to talk mm -hmm. about deliverance. Yeah. And I've gotten under the pressure of like, well, maybe I shouldn't talk about it so no. much. And maybe I, that's the devil. That is the devil. The only person that hates deliverance is religious people and the religious devil. Religious people and the demon. But Absolutely. And, and again, I had a guy today post a TikTok video, a five second TikTok video of me from a one hour sermon about deliverance uh -huh. saying like, we all should be casting on demons. Yeah. And he was basically like, you don't have to do this. So I posted on his comments. I said, Matthew 10, Jesus commanded the 12 to cast out devils. Yeah. Luke 10, Jesus commands the 72. And so my, my, answer, my question was, what else did Jesus tell the disciples to do that we shouldn't do anymore? Wow. Because he commanded them to do it, right. but now you're telling me we don't need to do it. So it's very dangerous, this whole religious doctrine mm -hmm. of miracles aren't for today, mm -hmm. deliverance isn't for today. Your preaching is literally mm -hmm. keeping people in bondage. Yeah. Um, this is what, this yeah. was the indictment Jesus had on the Pharisees. You're constantly harassing yes. me because I'm trying to cast out devils. Mm -hmm. You're constantly telling me I'm the devil, I'm a demon, I'm a heretic, mm -hmm. I'm a false teacher. They literally called Jesus a cult leader and Jesus is like, and what what did I, what have I done but heal a blind man on the Sabbath? Wow. This is what Jesus told right, them. Right, he right, goes, right. what have I done but a lady that had an issue of blood? And mm -hmm. you're mad at me? He said, but mm -hmm. you untie your donkey? Luke 13, he says, right? you untie your donkey on the Sabbath? On the Sabbath? But you're mad at me that I untied a woman that's free. been bound for 18 mm -hmm. years to a demon? So mm -hmm. it's it's demonic. These mm -hmm. religious leaders that are propagating this message that deliverance isn't for today, mm -hmm. they are being fueled by the devil. Mm -hmm. Their work, they are being, yeah. they don't know it. They're not, mm -hmm. the devil's not gonna come out and say, oh, by the way, right. I'm, I'm working in you. Right. But the devil's using them, right. just like the devil spoke through Peter and Jesus right. said, Satan, get behind me. You're doing, mm -hmm. you're saying, what, you sa what you're saying sounds good. Right. Right? You don't want me to die, but you're going against my plan. Right. And Jesus's plan is that every single person would have the testimony sh that Marcella yeah. has. I was lost, but now I'm found. And I think the thing that challenges people is you get born again, you get saved, and they say that the Holy Spirit can't dwell. I know the whole theology, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But like just taking like real life example, I definitely was filled with the Holy Spirit, born yeah. again, baptized. So then where did the demons go? Yeah. I clearly had them. Yeah. Right? They, where did where did they go? Yeah. 
did did I like poop them out? Yeah. Like, what, what? No, like they yeah. were still there. They need to be cast out. Jesus gives a manual. He gives yeah. us a direction for how to handle these. It's not like we're making something up on how to handle a problem. Yeah, he gives one us the directive. Is cast them out. It's exorcism. Right. We call it deliverance in a biblical way. It would be exorcism, mm -hmm. right? Like it's mm -hmm. it's commanding demons to leave. The demons leave, but there's mm -hmm. no other prescription. And for I it. too think is like. We are so denying the world of just a beautiful testimony of yes. the power of Christ. Because when you actually see someone like my life, like, so I tell my, I told my cousin, shout out to Gio. We love him so much. I told my cousin, you know, I'm straight up with my family. They saw my life completely change. I'll tell them super casually. Oh yeah. I run a deliverance map. You know, people get free, set free from demons. I cast demons out. And my cousins are like, they believe because they yes. saw my life Yes, and they're like, that is amazing. Yeah. You know, and then they see, you know, people like Nico, they see our lives for how many years now have we been walking this out? Right. So consistently, and they see the change in our lives. They don't just see the religion. The they don't just see the fact that we say we're Christian. They see us showing up for their families and they mm. see us being consistent in our own families. They see us free. They see a girl that used to be, he was my powerlifting coach and my bikini model coach at one point. Yeah. So he saw the demonization. Yeah. He saw the darkness and then now he sees salvation and I'm so proud of him. But, uh, long story short, it's like for him There's to fruit. see that, right? There's for fruit. him to see demons come out, for people to see these, uh, you know, videos, and people are like, "Why do you do that? Is there no dignity?" And it's like maybe you want to go be religious and be offended, but there is a new ager out there that is yep. finding peace in their chakras and crystals and meditation. Now they're getting demonized. They see someone get set free, and they're like, "Hold on a minute." Maybe there's something to this Jesus and they get saved. They get radically saved. They start casting out demons. They start serving Jesus. So it reminds me of Jesus in the book of Luke where they're like, get out, Jesus. Herod's trying to kill you. And in my version, NLT, Jesus literally says, he's like, you tell that fox, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep casting out demons. Yep. And I'm like, go, Jesus. Yes, like, yes. he doesn't care. He's like, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep setting my people free. Like, you want to miss out on the power of God. You want to miss out on seeing people's lives transformed. Yeah. Go ahead. You, well, you could go do that. It's but like their negativity and unbelief didn't change the fact the guy that was born blind could now see. See, like that's your, amazing. Your critics and the people that are criticize us or criticize yeah. deliverance or whatever, it has zero bearing on the fact that you no longer cut yourself. Yeah. You're no longer bulimic. You're no longer, you know, four hours vomiting every right. single day. You're no longer having perverted all these yeah. things that you went through. They're, ma they're making a YouTube video saying, oh, deliverance isn't real, has zero bearing on I was bl like blind yeah. and now I see. Yeah. So it's just crazy how people think that their unbelief is going to take things in or out of existence. Mm -hmm. The only thing it's going to do is keep you in the, sand in the mm -hmm. stands, keep mm -hmm. you as a spectator. And we've said this before, the loudest boos come from the cheapest yeah. seats. The people that talk the most are the people that do the least. Absolutely. The people that are the most cynical about deliverance are the ones that need it the most. Right. So when you're cynical and angry about it, like what in you mm -hmm. is making you angry about other people getting Freedom. set free? But a, but in your savior, spirit. in your king, and it exalts him. It glorifies Jesus. It shows Jesus. him to be He's the, the most supreme. He's the one that gets credit for it when right. someone gets delivered. And, and I don't, I mean, I think that, I, I mean, okay, I'm just going to say this like for myself. Realizing that you have demons, it takes a lot of humility. And I think that some people just don't want to humble themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's a really, it's a place of humility where you do get free. Yep. And I think that some people, it challenges their haughtiness. Yep. And, and that's just unfortunate because there's a way better freedom where you don't have to have all that lack of joy. And like, yeah. you know, you could literally just be free and set people free. And it's Absolutely. amazing. And God can be glorified. People see signs and wonders and miracles and God's glorified. And yep. it's exactly what's happening at Lifesong. And that's, I'm so grateful that we have the ministry and the leaders that we do because they let God do what God yes. wants to do. And we have the whole city flocking to our church. Yep. Before Mike Signorelli came, the weekend before that, we were so packed that in my mind, I was like, how are we even going to fit people when Mike comes? Crazy. Like, you know, now we're like overflow, overflow. And it's this, it's our city. Yep. Our city is seeing the fruit of free people. Yes. We're, you know, we're not giving them. And we're not in a destination city. We're in no. one of the, well, they say it's the murder capital of America. Yeah. Not a glorious destination city. People are like, why are you there? Yet there was over 3,000 people mm -hmm. on Sunday coming to the, couldn't get in mm -hmm. outside, crying out at the mm -hmm. altar, crying out. There's a hunger. What yeah. is the answer to a city that is, the murder capital of America. Yeah. What is the answer? Right. Is the answer some watered down, lukewarm message of, oh, that's not for today? Come on, Isaiah. Or is the answer, we are going to come against every strategy, every plan, every contract of the enemy. Let's pr let's pray for the chat here, yeah. okay? As, as we close out yeah. this, we want to pray for the chat and then we'll give you guys a chance if you want to sew into her ministry yeah. and then we'll hang out and talk and you could read some of the comments too and see what I do all the time. <laughs> I don't I know, know if I want to read the comments. No, I don't know no, how you, I don't know how you just, I don't know how you, okay, okay. 
So we manifest and we're going to pray. Father, we thank yeah. you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank we you thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're moving right now. Lord, we pray right now over every yeah. single person watching this on the replay, on Spotify, on yes, Apple, Lord. on YouTube, wherever they're watching, we pray, Lord, you're delivering power. Lord, your word says yes, it is God. the finger of God. It's the finger of God when deliverance yes, happens. Lord. So we pray, Lord, your finger would touch every single yes, listener Lord. that you'd bring healing You'd bring deliverance that every unclean spirit, yes. every unclean personality, yes, every power of darkness would be broken. Lord, have your way. Move yes, right now in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, do what only you can do. Every spirit of anger, every spirit of bitterness, every spirit of depression, every yes, spirit of infirmity, Lord. we call yes, you Lord. out now. You, these people are not name. your home. You in have no Jesus power. Name. You have no authority. We cancel your plans. We cancel your strategies. We cancel your assignments. In Jesus' name, we command you to come up and out now in Jesus' name. Every unclean spirit, every unclean personality, we command you to go now in Jesus' name. You have no power. You have no authority. The Lord rebukes you, Satan. We do not come in our authority. We come in the authority of Jesus. And we command just... Freedom to come right now in Jesus' name. We pray, Holy Spirit, you would deliver them tonight. You would fill them yes, with your Holy Spirit and yes, power. God. Lord, give them a hunger for your word. Yes, Maybe God. some of you aren't saved and you need to repent right now. Yes, repent of your sin. Yes, Turn to God. Yes. Say, Lord, I give you everything. I'm tired of my life the way it is. Yes. I look to the cross. I look to what you've done. I believe in the work you've done, Jesus. A real man died and three days later, the story wasn't over because he come rose on, again. Come on. And right now you have the a chance to turn to that Jesus, Acts 2.38 says, repent and be baptized. What do we do? The Bible says in the book of Acts, God commands all men everywhere to repent. There was a time where he overlooked our ignorance, but now book of Acts says, God requires every man everywhere to repent. So repent tonight, turn from your ways, change the way you think, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you right now. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Get free. Tonight is your night. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yes, John the Lord. Baptist said, I come and baptize in water. One comes greater with a greater baptism, and that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire. So tonight is your night. Tonight you can have breakthrough. Tonight you can have deliverance. Yes. Tonight you can have the start of a testimony. Saying it was that night. Mm -hmm. I was in my living room. I was come in my on. bedroom. I was come in my on. car. I was come watching on. on a replay a month from now, and the Holy Spirit called my number rang my doorbell, knocked on my door, and Come I on. said, Lord, here I am. I'm opening up to him. Don't be closed off. Don't let those spirits lie to you hearing voices. Today's your day to get free in Jesus' name. Jesus name. And then we also have our deliverance map. If you need more deliverance, you need mm -hmm. more deliverance, you can go to isaiasaldivar.com slash deliverance. We make zero dollars mm -hmm. yep. off of this. We pay for the website. We pay mm -hmm. to have people help us mm -hmm. with it. There's no money to be made in this. It's not about me. It's about mm -hmm. what God is doing. So you mm -hmm. can find someone on that mods. Put the link in the chat. You can find someone there and you can get free. You can get yes, delivered. Do so it. Deliverance is the children's bread. Tonight is your night to be delivered. Um, if you guys want to partner with us, our ministry, this is free. Of course, we've been on here for two hours now. You haven't paid anything. If you didn't know, this was free to watch. I know we had tons of issues on Facebook, but you know what? Come over to YouTube. Guys, mm -hmm. here's the thing. We're streaming in 4K. Facebook compresses it. I don't even know if we're on Facebook, so I don't see any comments, but just come over to YouTube because it is what it is. We're going to keep pushing through and praying. Um, please guys, so into the broadcast tonight, there's a link to give down below. So into what God is doing. I want to give you a chance too, if you have any closing remarks or anything that you'd want to say. Um, to yeah, I think my heart, yeah, my heart really just goes out to leaders in the church. My heart really goes out to worship leaders that are serving in the house of God and you are bound I just want to let you know that deliverance is not something to be ashamed of and you, you, it'll help you run farther, faster, harder for God without all the hindrances. Um, know that God is faithful, that what he starts in you, he's going to finish. Do not be ashamed of going after everything that God has for you. Um, I just know a lot of people, obviously I do the map and your church doesn't do deliverance. And all I have to say that is just find some, find somewhere that does, you yes. know, we don't have to go and like bash places. I believe Isaiah, I believe that churches that were once denying Jesus, I'm sorry, denying, well, yeah, denying Jesus, uh, a deliverance. I believe that in 2023, they're going to have no choice Isaiah because of what is going to come out in, in public with darkness against light that they're going to say, we have to, we have to start doing this because this is the only way that our people are going to get free. Like it's come happening. On. We have to just get with it. I totally believe that. And I just pray if you're a pastor, 
you're a leader or you've been against deliverance, I pray that God softens your heart. Yes. I pray that tonight you see my testimony and you see that there are many more people like me sitting in your congregation that need you to just ask the Lord to um, help you, help your heart to understand, help your help your mind. I'm not against you. I'm not saying like, you know, shame on you for not. I'm, not, I'm saying like, God, I pray that you just wreck them right here and right now and let them see people like me that, I mean, I'm now leading worship. I Not just leading worship, but like, like on, we're, we're, we're going for it as a church. I mean, anyone in Lifesong can testify, but I wouldn't be able to do that if I wasn't free. I would be so bound with the lies in my mind. And there are so many people out there in your congregation that there's just a glory to glory for them to go through, but they need to go through deliverance. They need to go through and get freedom. And I just want to say for all leaders, um, children's pastors, ch pastors' wives, all the things, deliverance is your portion. Go after it. Don't hold back. Don't be ashamed. Um, I, it's, it's beautiful, and I just recommend if, if you don't have it in your church, find someone on a deliverance map. And also, sorry, Isaiah, I just want to say this. No, when it goes to time. the deliverance map, um, people ask me this all the time, so I just want to say what I do is I contact the person, and then I do a FaceTime call. That's awesome. And I, I've just, it's just been really helpful getting to know the person and seeing if they're a good fit and then kind of moving forward with that. But we had so many good testimonies from, from the map, so just go for it. That's what the map is for. Um, also, there are church icons there. So if you want to go to a church to do deliverance, like if you you know are a pastor or something like that, I know you guys a lot of Isaiah a lot of emails are can Isaiah do my deliverance? And yeah. I've I've had no. been telling them like, dude, he's so That's busy, I'm so sorry. For, yeah, he's like he can't man. do one on one like you know. But um, I would just say there are churches on there that are amazing that are just laying down their time to serve. So get on the map, get connected, um, get free. And for those of you that have gotten free, keep testifying. Yes. Because there are people out there that are coming out of witchcraft. There are people out there that are coming out of those lifestyles, and they need to hear your testimony. You might think that you don't know enough about Christ yet. You don't know enough about the Bible, just tell your testimony. Start there. Get on your YouTube, get on your TikTok, get on your Instagram, and just tell people about the, what the Lord has done. Because people might be able to challenge your theology and all that, but they cannot say anything about what God has done in your life with your testimony. So keep testifying. No story is too little for you to get out there. People in the world right now, they need to hear about the power of God. Um, and, and we just, we got to give it to them. Isaiah said it before, you know, if the church doesn't teach about the supernatural, the new age will. Mm. Let's get to the forefronts and let's start teaching people, giving our testimonies and just testifying about the power of God. So good. And someone said, oops, did I do that? Oh yeah, I, I put the wrong, oh, I put the wrong button on my music thing. So I went to the music scene. She said, no one else does that. People are saying, what about the map in Canada? There is a Canadian map. Mm -hmm. It's a global map. So if, if you email it, I'll teach you how to do the instructions because there is a little bit of like a, a thing. They don't know you have to hold down the map, drag it over. So now I have a little thing that I include. Oh, perfect. Just email the Deliverance Network email yeah. that's on your website, Isaiah Saldivar, and just say, how do I use the map? And I'll forward you the instructions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so it's IsaiahSaldivar.com slash deliverance. If you guys want to get on the map, you can get on the map. Someone say, quit pu pushing buttons. It's fun to push <laughs> the buttons. I like to push the buttons. Um, it makes me do something with my hands. <laughs> Make sure uh, you could click oh, the music, Nico, if you want manually. Also, if you emailed in January, if it was around yeah, a specific not. time of an event, we got a flood of emails in. So I might be behind on the Deliverance Network emails. If just email, just forward it again to get to get it pushed to the front if you need to get it answered. Yeah, but, people say like, oh, I didn't yeah. get a response. I'm like, send yeah. it again. And it, we're it working again. with email guys, so email is unpredictable. Sometimes yeah. email is works out super good. Sometimes it doesn't work out good. So just, you know. Email yeah. it again. Yes. Oh, it's coming out. God bless you and your God team. God bless you awesome. guys. Make sure that you guys um, sew into the broadcast. We're going to stay on a little bit here, and then uh, we'll hang out with you guys. We'll try to see if we can get the music fixed. It's okay if not. And uh, we'll read oh. some chat while you guys give. I want to sew into Marcella tonight, so oh, sew into gosh. the broadcast so I could sew into her. Here's the thing. This is probably bad to say if I'm asking people to give. I'm going to give to her regardless of what you guys give, but just help out, okay? Because either way, I'm going to sew into her, but help out, and we're going to bless her ministry. The music the music's is loud. Too loud. Yeah, we're having issues, but we're going to get it fixed. It's all good, guys. This is after stream. We could chill now, okay? All the serious good stuff is Stevie. all done, but yeah, we're gonna this work it out. This is fun, Isaiah. This is why That's you shout people you, out. This is so fun. This is hi, why I do Selena. This for hours. Hi, Andrea. This is why you shout people yes. out. This is so fun. It's like I seriously to think of your people. YouTube is one of the more fun YouTubes to be on because it's so interactive. And we're not toxic here. Oh, no, exactly. Said, Don't end, please. We're gonna stay on for a little bit here. Do but yes, vet. the deliverance map is. Do you want to answer that, Isaiah? Do you vet people? Yes, she just talked about that. She yeah. does FaceTimes with them. We, I do FaceTime. So to get onto the map, we have an application. And then again, Isaiah just put on there, use your discretion. But I just say do a FaceTime call so you know, you know what I mean, who you're dealing with. And if it, if it doesn't feel like a good fit, then just be honest, be nice, be kind, and you know, move on maybe to the next one.
And if you're young and like 10 years old or 12 years old filling yeah. out, we don't <laughs> need you to do. You're yeah. too young. No. So mm -hmm. partner up with somebody. Yeah. And on, on, when you're applying that part where it says, um, do you have any experience? Like, even if people are just like, well, I'm hungry for God, I'm learning, I'm training, you know, just be honest on it about it. Like, just, you know, I, I do read everything that you guys put in there. Yeah, absolutely. To get on. Yeah. Truth sets captives free when they apply it. Absolutely. Amen. Yes, there's there's a deliverance all over the world. It's the all map over. is worldwide. So grab the map and then, yeah, the yeah. music we, we were working on. I'll just say it since we're here. If you're on a mobile device, drag it over with two fingers. So I, when it pops up, you're going to see yes. Africa. Hold the map down and then drag it over. And then like you're looking at a picture to zoom in, open up, like touch, tap it, open up and then tap the little pin, contact should come up. Shout out her podcast. <laughs> Sophia said, you've officially given the most raw talk on Isaiah's Aww. channel. That's not bad for 1,200 videos. It's not bad, man. <laughs> it's good. 1,200 videos, I was like, that was seriously, I'm telling you, her testimony yeah. is so strong. Talk about your podcast, so yeah. Um, okay, so it's called A Walk With Friends, and I wanted to go live. I'm gonna have to have Why like Nico. Why do we not Nico. have the link? I, I know, have I have Nico, Nico and Isaiah. I basically have people come on and talk about their testimony. I just, as real and raw as possible, and just, you know, tell the truth about, about the Lord and what God's done in their life. And honestly, you guys, I think the reason my, my testimony is so real and so raw is one, I know that there are people out there that need um, to hear it, but two, getting saved has taught me to tell the truth and not lie. And mm. it makes your life so easy. So good. If, if you have to like lie about stuff and hide stuff, it's so exhausting. And so just tell the truth, be honest about your testimony. And like, like with people like Isaiah, like that super funny person that was like, I know things about you and your high school. Isaiah's yeah. like, bro, I'm homeschooled. Yeah, some dude. So, <laughs> it's so funny. I might as well just tell a story since you said it. It was so funny. Some guy, he messaged me on Instagram. He said, hey, I have this podcast where I like, I expose people. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the, he was a wannabe heresy hunter, but he said, I'm about to do an episode on you. He said someone from your uh, someone from your school. I think he said your high school or your junior high. Someone from your school. They came out and they said that you you abused them, right? So uh, we obviously know what he was trying to say. Nico, what did he do to you? Yeah, he said he said there uh, <laughs> that you abused them. I laughed so hard and I wrote him back. I was like, bro, I've been homeschooled my whole life. I never went to school. <laughs> so funny. He never messaged me back. He never so had the podcast. Funny. So this guy had a podcast apparently from. A, Guy who went to school with me, or girl, probably, and apparently I abused them, but he didn't know I was homeschooled my whole life. I never went to school. Just, so I was like, these, these, yeah. these wolves out here are crazy. And I, too, like as a Christian, just live your life super clean and live your life honestly. Like, literally, people will literally glean from that. People at my church, they're just like, Marcella, you're everything we needed. I'm like, because I have no filter. I just tell the truth and it helps other people tell the truth. It's what we all really want to do, yep. right? We have God, we have the Lord, we have the Holy Spirit. He'll help us through the things we're struggling through. Just tell the truth, learn to tell the truth about your life. And no one can really go back and be like, I know this about you. Be like, I already told everything about my life. So yep. There's really nothing to, you know, Absolutely. Say. Everyone's saying you did so good. Jesus is the way, Thank the truth, you. and the life. Amen. We believe in the Trinity. So mm -hmm. someone said, do you believe in Trinity or one yes. God? The Trinity is one God. But mm -hmm. again, people are like, can you explain the Trinity, Trinity simply? Uh -huh. How are you going to explain God and to right. finite people? So these mm -hmm. are not concepts that I'm completely fine with being like, I don't fully understand everything in the Bible, but guess what? I'm not God yeah. and I just have faith and I actually believe him. There's yeah. her link right there. So yeah. Nico just put it in the comments oh, on Spotify. You, Go show her love, guys. I'll link it in the description after yeah. the video. But it's on, is it Spotify is the main place? And Apple, Apple Music. Okay. So mm -hmm. Spotify and Apple, guys, make sure you leave a review, listen, you follow. Oh, thank you guys awesome. that are donating. Kingdom thank you Freedom. For donating. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you. And you, you guys, for I just got to say thank that you. this team is the most hardworking team. I'm not saying that just because they're it. my friends. <laughs> you guys, I have witnessed this family be faithful for so many years. And I honestly, I support the ministry, not because he's my friend, but because I know that what he's doing is kingdom. And I believe that my reward is in heaven. And I believe that what this ministry is doing and what they're doing, it's eternal. It's, it's kingdom work. And the work ethic of these guys is amazing. I see Isaiah preach. I see Nico working. I see the family all the time. I just see their work ethic. And I'm like, there is not, not a better place that I could imagine giving into because you know that these people are taking what's being given and they're multiplying it for the kingdom. Like I, I just saw that video that you did with all this equipment and I'm like, I watch a bunch of photography people and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, you're giving out all this free information of all this technology, all this, it's all kingdom Thank for you. people that are doing, I mean, it's just like, you're so generous. I don't want to even want to have tell you, you more often. <laughs> no, like the story, I even tell people stories because they're just like, you know, oh, what is Isaiah like and things like that. And I'm like, you know, to be very honest with you, he's one of the most generous people that you will ever meet. And it's not just Isaiah, it's his family.
Thank you. It's like Cherish, Nico. I remember Cherish bought me this little highlighter brush the first time I met her. And I like was so like taken over by her because no one's ever like bought me something. She was just buying something for herself and then bought me something. She didn't even know me. Like oh. I'm just, I'm gonna totally like blast her right now. She even paid for one of my family's meals when they met her at Texas Roadhouse. Wow. And then she like left the my restaurant. My family's very, I could test She left the restaurant. And, nice. and so I'm not, I'm not saying that stuff just like, oh my God, it's just who they are. It's just who they are. So when you're giving money, your hard earned money. And I get that, right? We all work super hard for our money. Um, you want to make sure that it's going into a good place. Amen. And so I, I this is a good that. place. So please, please, so please consider partnering. Your money is going into incredible ground. Sorry, I just laughed to contrast that. Someone in the comments said, I see why you're so popular. You never call out anything. I'm like, dude. What? You... No, someone in the comments said they see why I'm popular. It's because I don't call anything out. But I uh -huh. laugh because we just two hours, spent two hours calling out every yeah. demonic yeah. thing, sin. I'm I like, know. bro, you've never watched my channel. Sorry, I had to laugh because you're complimenting me. And then there's a yeah. guy in the chat saying, you're popular because you never call anything out. When we, yeah. you haven't heard my preaching, brother. Brother, go listen to my preaching and uh, you'll, you'll definitely change your mind. Yeah. If you're demonized, can you cast out demons? Yes. I cast yes, out you demons. Can. When I yes, you can. Yeah. If you're demonized, I would get deliverance, mm -hmm. but it's definitely possible. Deliver casting out devils is not about what you've done. It's about what Christ has done. So it's not about you. If you think like, oh, because I'm this way, nope. I can't do it. That's like yeah. saying I'm sick in body. I can't pray for the sick. You right. absolutely and can. And the power is in the name of Jesus. Yes. I had demons on board after a, a deliverance, and I was on the side of the road doing a deliverance at a revival, and this demon literally spoke out and said, um, I know things about you. And I had to encourage myself in the Lord. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Yes. And I literally shouted back, and I was like, what, that I'm covered in the blood? Like <laughs> that's, I, that's all I could say because it's like it's not even about me. So I even was in deliverances where I was jittering, and I didn't know I needed freedom, but I was going – after this thing, knowing this person needed to be free, it was about that person and all the power being in Jesus Christ. So Amazing. don't make it about you, but yes, get deliverance so that the deliverance is easier for you so that you don't feel uncomfortable. And I even had a deliverance recently where it was a demon of molestation and it wasn't coming out. And literally Isaiah, the demon looked at me and it said, cause I was asking who it was. And it said, you know me. Wow. And then it said wow. who it was and it tried to trip me up. And I'm like, I don't care. Get out. Yeah. Like, like it just tried to trip me up and like try to get me into that emotion place of emotion. I'm like, this isn't about me. This is about this person and they need to get free. So That's so good. Yeah. Alyssa said, how do I get deliverance if my pastor doesn't believe Christians could have demons? I'm glad you asked. Go to the deliverance map. Yeah. Go to the deliverance map. Isaiah slash deliverance. Just get Meet freedom. up with somebody yeah. outside of your church. Yeah. And you can still go to that church. But yeah, if your pastor doesn't believe in uh, it, go find someone to do deliverance. That's literally why we made the yeah. map. Yeah. AXL Rose. No, the demon was speaking out of the person. Yeah. So the demon was speaking out of the person for those of you asking. Okay. Do you have YouTube? Um, I did like a deliverance training and I just posted that video, but I don't have like a YouTube. Oh, we'll Nicole, put her links like, all in yeah. the description we'll after. Do, we'll get yeah. her links. There's a deliverance map link. Yeah. She's on YouTube. Someone said they're finding you already. Oh, but gosh. Yeah, her name's in the description, guys, and we'll put her link okay. and everything like that. But yes. So so I did not know Melissa. I mean, there are so many things I didn't know were spirits. I don't make theologies out of these things. It's just when they tell me their names, I'm like, okay, then get out. Yes. And you know? uh, Don Dickerman has recorded, I think he said 100,000 different wow. names of spirits. Yeah, 100,000 wow. different names. So yeah, Don Dickerman's done over 10,000 deliverances. He's recorded mm -hmm. 100,000 different demons. There's, wow. a, there's there's more than you guys Love Don Dickerman. Him and Derek Prince are like nonstop They're playing. They're amazing. Um, Mark so, Wampler yeah. said, can you put the code on screen to give? I will do that soon, Mark. Thank you. I appreciate you, bro. We haven't got the giving stuff set up on this computer yet, but I'll I'll set that up. By next stream, there'll be a QR code to give. Yeah, I, that's a I fail do want to say, me. like, for people, I know this is like, we're just, we're going in. But I mean, for people that have got, gone through molestation, I would definitely say that allow the Holy Spirit to take you through the process of healing. It's good. Um you know, I know that there was a demon there for me, but there was a lot of healing that needed to happen, especially as a married woman. So that is something that intimacy is so sacred to God. And um, when that's taken from you, it's really hard. So just, I would really encourage you, go through the healing. Yes. Go through the healing. Uh, you know, find someone on the deliverance map to pray healing and, 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 and deliverance. Go, go after it. Don't, don't ignore that, especially if, I, I, Isaiah, you'd be surprised how many married women when I talk about how hard it is to have, I mean, I'm, can I just talk yeah, about this? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, to have intimacy in covenant. Good. When you come from that type of past, it's really hard. And a lot of people are very ashamed because they mm -hmm. don't know what's wrong with them. Go through deliverance, go through healing. Good. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have to make sure that you watch this whole thing for those of you just jumping on. And a lot of things, when you talked about your testimony of, of being molested as a kid and that stuff started, People don't realize it's not always what you've done, but what's been done to you. So mm -hmm. you might be, you. the first thing you think was, 
well, that's unfair. How could a spirit come from something right. that was done to her? But again, the word fair doesn't exist in the devil's vocabulary. Yeah. So if you're looking to like, the, de that's the not devil's fair, not saved. He doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> that's the <a>, that's the <laughs> quote. Say that again. That, that's the. I mean, we get saved, and we think he gets saved. Of the he night. Get saved. She said, "The devil's not saved." Yeah. We always think like. Well, it's not fair. The devil yeah. doesn't play fair. He, he hates you. He doesn't have to play yeah. fair. And I think so, Vlad talked yeah. about it this way. He Good. said they're like flies. All they need is an open door. Yes. You don't need to tell them to come in. You don't need to do anything. What if the door's open? Yeah, if you open the door, in. you can't tell a fly, don't come yeah. in. I mean, they're going to come in if you open the door. So a lot of people, yeah. they what they what the spirits they have are actually from what's been done to them. The right. trauma is the yeah. open door. The right. abuse is the open door. And so this is the part about with leaders, and I'm not just going to say the word pastors and just blanket it that way because I know it sounds like I'm just shouting at a person, but yeah, pastors, leaders, when you're not teaching about um, authority in Christ against the demonic forces, you're not teaching people how to challenge darkness in your lives good. when you go through things like that. It's so good. you're living with a victim mentality of this stuff happened to me, why it's not fair. No, you need to be teaching your people how to get up on their own two feet and tell those demons to leave. Yeah. Yes. Tell perversion to leave. Someone on here said, can you talk about perversion and molestation? If you're getting perverted thoughts, the Bible says submit to submit to God, resist you know the enemy. So you submit to God, make sure your life is submitted to God. And when you get those thoughts, you literally say, those are not my thoughts. I rebuke you. Get out in Jesus' name. Whether it's an outside thought coming in from an attack um, because the devil knows what you've been through, so he's just trying to put attacks on you, or whether it's something from the inside. Have no fear. The perfect love of God casts out Good. all fear. You shouldn't have any fear when you're dealing with the devil. He'll try to intimidate you to fear him, but don't do it. Stand in Christ. The Bible says that the fear of God is your refuge. Stand in Christ and tell the de devil, leave me alone. Come on. Get out. Get away from me. Don't talk to me. Even if there's like, you know, thoughts in your, don't agree with it. Yeah, Marissa, that's right. If you get a thought, if I'm sitting here and this man of God is talking and I start hearing, um, he likes you, Guys, you might think this is crazy. A lot of people think this. Yes. A lot of women go into church and they think that the pastor has a thing for them. There's a demon on, on board. And I'm not saying all the time, I'm not saying he doesn't like you, but there's like this awkward thing where you always feel like men of God are looking at you and liking you. When those thoughts come, you got to rebuke them. Don't struggle. I know that pastors don't want to teach about this, but I'm going to teach about this. Get oh. on your own two feet and you tell that spirit to leave you alone. You command that spirit. I com It could be Jezebel. doesn't matter. doesn't matter what the name is. I command that spirit that's speaking to me to shut its mouth. I don't want to hear it. That's not my thought. And then go through deliverance. So good. So good. Somebody said, I'm under 18. How can I get deliverance on the map? I'm sorry. I think we confused you. So what we were saying was you can't be on the map and be doing deliverances if you're under 18, just for a bunch of liability reasons and legal reasons and other reasons. Yeah. But you could still get delivered if you're under 18. Yeah. So if you're under 18 and you want to get deliverance, talk to your parents. Yes. Don't, I wouldn't, well, I don't know. If I'm desperate, I probably would. But I don't recommend you going behind your parents' back, sneaking out, trying to go get deliverance. Talk to them, ask them, and see if they let you. But honestly, I mean, if I was like 16 and super desperate, I would probably just ride my bike to get delivered and go somewhere. But I'm just yeah. saying, just use discretion, okay? Because, you know, some of us out here are super desperate. And, and too, some people say, how do I people. know I have a demon? This might not work for everybody, but, you know, kind of see these things that are out of norm uh, abnormal. I actually, Isaiah, I did the whole look in the mirror thing. Yeah. And like that actually one towards, towards my later, like you know, maturity. Yeah, I did. Cause I was desperate. Yeah. And I remember looking in the mirror and I said something, yeah, don't be bullied by demons. Absolutely. Come on now. I still do that. I'll go in now. the mirror and be like, I command you to come yeah. out. Is there anything there? And I wait yeah. to see. I'm like, okay, I'm good. Yeah. What is your name? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm Isaiah. I was like, okay, yeah. I'm good. And even too, no, I, have, real, I have my friends, uh, my husband who, um, you know, shout out to Alan. He's an amazing man of God. I love him so much. He's the best. But He's not as feisty as me, you know, he's, he's very like, and he's, and he's a correct, he's a, he's in law enforcement. So you would think that he would be, but he's super gentle. But I was like, babe, I need you to lay your hands on me and call this demon out. And he's like, are you serious? I'm like, yes. And do it like you mean it, you know? And so he's laying hands on me and he's like, Jesus, Pretend I'm like, no, 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 you're not talking to Jesus right now. <laughs> Cause you know, he starts praying to Jesus and I'm like, no, 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 no. He's Jesus is with us, but yeah. you're talking to the demon, talk to the demon and tell it to leave. And he's like, I love that. Okay. I love that. <laughs> so you could just have your friend. I honestly, I would be like, get your friend that believes in the Lord with you yes. and get, you know, play one of Isaiah's videos, learn the basics. Isaiah has tons of videos. There's a, we have, yeah, playlist, a playlist, right? Playlist. I mean, even Vlad, Mike, they, uh, Jenny, they all have great There's content no excuse to learn. There's right now no. in this world of YouTube that all yeah. of us have made like 100 videos on this to, yeah. to not learn. And, and have your friend just be like, go walk you through forgiveness and renouncing. That's kind of what we do. Yeah. And then call them out. Yep. How cherished did, you know, with you? We have videos on self-deliverance. If you're like in the middle of Antarctica living on an iceberg and you can't get to nobody, <laughs> we have Get yourself a polar yeah. bear. Come on yeah, now. Yeah, we have self-deliverance videos you poem. can go through as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I went to the map and it's all overseas. No. Uh, so Shelly, not to be rude, you got to move it though. Yeah. It starts in see. Africa. We talked to the creators of the map. 
They haven't been able to fix it. It's kind of like a bug, but you got to move the map. So if you're on a computer, drag and click. If you're on uh, your phone, two fingers and scroll. But no, the map, we have over a thousand people in the U.S. on the map. Thank you, by yeah. the way. Worldwide, uh, yeah. Janae, Warren and Donna, Anonymous, all the donations Thank you for coming giving. in. Thank yes. you, guys. We don't have the screen set up right now. I'll read the donations after to move over, but we'll do that another time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They love your laugh, okay. Nico. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, okay, I'm just going to show this. Nico, okay. can I see this? Yeah, I'll go to your screen. Okay, so it's going to pull up to Africa, like right when you get on it. Two fingers on the screen and move it. Look at that. Okay, now it's moving. it's moving. And then to go to where you want to go, just zoom in like that. And then it'll start zooming in. Mine might not load because it's like Wi-Fi. And just, uh, yeah, and just you Calif go. oh, you're back in oh, Africa. Oh, I'm back there. Just keep going this <laughs> way. But yeah, just in California, there's 225 people. And so, keep doing that until the pins pop up and then click the pin. And literally, look, at it says 20, 225 people just in the west of the U.S., like at 86 there, right, 128 down there, right now. all over. And then also, if you don't want to minister, you look at a little pin. I'm going to tap it. If you don't want to minister, just email and let us know, and then we'll, and there's their information. Yeah, so that, it's very simple to use, guys. And we'll delete it. Everybody likes Nico laughing in the background. He's so, I'm sneaking out to epic. get delivered. So hey, epic. do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. What Be desperate. What does the house mean? The house the means it's a church, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's a little church. It looks like a house, but it's a little church. And that's really cool because, man, especially I'm telling you, after you did those events, there have been so many lead pastors that are like emailing and they're like, I'm the pastor of this church and we want to do deliverance. I'm like, that's amazing. I love it. And they have like teams doing deliverance and stuff too. What's so funny? Uh, we were just saying a joke. Laughing Where do you find laughing. the map? <laughs> that. There you go. That That's, is so funny. It's funny with his big old head, so headphones funny. on him laughing. We're going to get a laugh cam soon. Don't worry. Seriously. We need a laugh cam. Everyone put like, free? Yes. everyone like spam the chat if you want like cherish Nico and Isaiah in, in this. We're gonna, it we would need be to do so it. funny. My P.O. Box, uh, Kelly, is in the description. My P.O. Box in the description. Yeah, we, we're going to do a family podcast. We got set up. We, have, we, we can do four people. Gosh. Excuse me. And then put like Alyssa and Stevie in here. Oh my gosh. It would just be giggle fest. That would be hilarious. But all the females. We, so we guys, we've been we live for it. two and a half hours almost. Yeah. So we awesome. had an amazing time. What a great time. Amazing testimony. Type one in the chat. Give some love to Marcella. Marcella, love we you appreciate you. Thank you so much for being on. We're going to do more in-person podcasts, more people in the studio. I know you guys love the studio. I love being in the studio. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's so nice. It. Listen, I'm not just saying it, it's but Miami. this is the nicest Christian podcast studio out there. I mean, I mean, oh, listen, if it's not named, name someone that has a better one. I want to go see it. There, <laughs> there, there right? is like, it. I'm just there saying, it. name somebody. Ruslan's is pretty cool. Name somebody. Right? Who, uh, who else you know, does? Who but, else does podcasts? You know, I'm saying this is top notch oh right here. This is top notch. Her. We love Ruslan. Oh, was, I'm like naming people. I was texting like, Ruslan my... today, but you know what I'm saying? Um, Ale Alexander. Vla <laughs> I love how Vlad's always so calm on his. You guys yeah. like, run. Vlad's like, today. Vlad's very calm. Today we, I'm like, but no, oh, if you guys so haven't nice. seen our studio tour video and you want to hear me speak Greek, yeah, the studio tour video. I mean, come on now. Can you guys find That was link a great me. video, though. If you guys can really find good. a better, nicer studio, link me. Let me know so I can see what they got going. No, seriously, it's not a competition, but it is. We love you guys. We appreciate awesome. you guys. You guys are amazing. My wife's falling out of her chair laughing right now. The studio is so cool. It has the best is microphone really? on social media. Thank you, Carlos. It does. Yeah. I said, that's actually the first thing I thought. I was like, whoa, those microphones are cool. Yeah. The white, you got you to gotta stand out. We put a lot of work in. We're all yeah. in personality, so... We, we decided to do a studio at the end of December and it took us almost a month. And I told you guys, once my mind is on something, it doesn't, my mind does not get off until it's done. So I'm very one track minded. So yes. All right, I know, I know we're, one, what? <laughs> what? Somebody said, Ruslan's going to make a video and it's going to say, Isaiah said this about my studio. <laughs> Gabriel, oh, you're man, that's funny, awesome. dude. Um, someone said they don't know how to use a deliverance map because of disabilities. Just email deliverance network that that network email and then ask a question on how to use the map. And then I will personally list all the contacts in your area by name and number. As I said, what's your name and name came up? Am I making that up? No, you didn't make that up, Miss Grace. You probably need deliverance. If I prayed and said, what's your name? And a name popped up in your head. If that's what you're thinking or what you're saying, then yes, get deliverance. Yes. Amen, Lisa. All right. Well, I haven't seen any cooler podcasts in the comments, so then I can officially say before yeah. 3,000 of you, we no are the coolest listening. Christian podcast online. I can say that now officially since apparently no one else. No, I'm just kidding. You guys are awesome. <laughs> okay. I love you guys. Appreciate love you guys. guys. Have a Let's good night. Let's see if this works. Let's see. We're still going to be on. They'll still hear us. There we go. We can still talk for a couple minutes here. Stream ending. I don't, I don't, is the music going? Can you scroll down, Nico, and see if the music's going? Oh, it is? Good. 
send this. Oh, we're not now. Send this to an unbeliever, yes. It's it's uh it's tradition that we talk on the ending screen. I always have to do this. Yes, yes, yes. These chairs are super comfortable. We've been two and a half hours and I still feel, other than I need to stretch my leg, my chicken legs out, I still feel comfortable. No, guys, I'm not on stilts. These are my legs. Don't worry. <laughs> just kidding. Someone said the table has better legs than you. I'm just kidding. They didn't say that. I'm just kidding. I just like making fun of myself. Someone's like, you all, my, why are you laughing? Listen, do you think it's true? My wife is literally falling out of the chair and snorting over there. Yes, no, we, we, I like to joke about myself. Someone's like, you need to stop making fun of yourself. Thank you guys. Her mic is muted. Oh, she's muted. Wait, is she not on the stream? Oh, she's not added to the stream ending. Is she not on there? You gotta add her as a source. Add her as an audio source. Plus, I know it's okay. Sorry, her mic's off guys. We'll make sure she's on for next time. Oh yeah, we need, hold on, is this gonna work? Oh no, I don't have Carl on the stream ending. You gotta put him on manually. Put the bird on manually. Let the guy have some, let him, let him have a spot here. Let him, I have all my equipment linked in the studio video, Amazon. Yes. Can we get a measuring tape on set? I think Brad wants to see how tall I am. Brad, we've already done this brother. I'm 5'11 and 3 fourths. I'm, five, I'm six foot with shoes and 5'11 and 3 fourths. Yes, yes, yes. They think I'm like five foot five. I don't know what's going on here. They think that I'm super short. They can see my long chicken legs. Alyssa, she said he's not Nico. She called my brother short. <laughs> you guys can hear Nico laughing. Okay, you can take Carl off now. My wife is literally on the floor laughing right now. I love that there's still 2,000 people on. Melissa, do you want to come on camera and do that? She's literally squilling so loud right now. Sounds like a petting zoo in here. <laughs> and he goes, We're having holy laughter out here right now. He's crying. Come when on. will you audition for the there, chosen? There, now your mic's back on. Oh, guys, look, we're back. When will you audition for The Chosen? Oh, we're gonna, if you guys start seeing me growing out my hair and my beard, then you'll know The Chosen's gonna be oh, on fine. soon. Yes. Alyssa's laughing. We're <laughs> back. We just can't get off. See, it's so, so fun. Funny. Now you know why I'm on here for hours. Now I get it. It's so fun. After you're done and you're like, you've already this said, you're, you're just like, okay, I can relax and read the comments and talk. It's, you're like talking to 2,000 people all at once. This is really fun. Yeah, it's fun. That's why I'm hours on here at the end. I love it. Carl can't drive to the music. Yeah, it's a little, he's a little offbeat. Everyone wants to see Nico, they said. Alyssa's over here. Hunched over. Hunched over laughing. Squealing. <laughs> she said calling my brother short was the best joke she's ever made in her life. <laughs> we need Nico to laugh on camera. Nico, you want to come on camera? Are you not ready? He's not ready. He's not ready. He can if he wants, but he's not ready yet. Uh, change chicken legs to Carl legs. For real though. Oh wait, how do we get back on? We were supposed to be ending. What happened, dude? I accidentally clicked the wrong button. It's those buttons, I'm telling you. It's all you. these buttons. I'm, I'm actually you. gonna put the buttons reveal. right here in my chair, dude, because I need to be able to just like click them with my hand. I'm gonna have to undo this and put it right in my chair. It's gonna be sitting up, boom, boom, boom. Oh yeah, that'll be nice. That'll be real nice. I hadn't watched in months. I'm so glad I came. Awesome. Thank you for being awesome, here after awesome. months. We don't know where you've yeah. been, but thank you. Come back. You. Come thank back. You. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, people that don't know, they're like, there's a bird on screen. Do you oh. know a bird, a bird landed on your broadcast? No, that's Carl. He's a friend here. We love That'd you guys. So Thank tricky. you guys, 2,500 of you we for still you being here. We'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully, we'll have Marcel on again. We will so in Jesus' funny. name, and uh, it'll be fun. All right, love you guys. So Goodbye. Nico, Nico. Love you guys. I know everyone wants to see Nico. Come on, dude, don't be scared. He literally streams. He's on stream for like 10 <laughs> hours a day. It's like you've never been on camera before. All right, see you guys.